If you like tranny hookers and shooting crocodile, tune in to FreedomFiends.com. Want to contribute to Liberty but short on cash? You can help the Freedom Fiends without even spending a post-1964 dime. Download U-Torrent and start seeding Fiends episodes and DVDs to help keep us drone-proof. There's a Torrent Club link at the top of FreedomFiends.com. There you'll find our Torrent RSS feed and instructions to grab past episodes and automatically download new ones, even while you're away from the computer. You'll also get special episodes of The Fiends and Anarchy Gumbo days or even weeks before regular podcast subscribers who aren't torrenting. Leave your computer on, seating the torrents while you're at work or asleep. The more people seating The Fiends, the more drone-proof will be when the boot comes down. You're trying to plug good, hot sound into basically a computer by itself, and then it sounds yeah. like ass because the computer yeah. doesn't know what to do with it. You got to have some kind of audio interface that's meant specifically for audio production, or otherwise, you can have you know yep. the best. Well, how much? In the world, how much the best is your? World, how much is your interface? It's like 150 bucks. That's about what the mixer that Ben's using is. Yeah, yeah. And I a, feel mixer, like a mixer's a lot more complex for a beginner, though. Like yeah, eight, maybe four or eight. How many does you just have? Eight sliders. Has four. Is it four, four. Okay. It's eight channels, it's but it's really it's four sliders. It's doubled up somehow. I've never it's used like four stereo four. or eight mono or mm-hmm. something like that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, and the eight mono, you'd have to plug four in as XLR and four in as quarter inch. Ah, uh, okay. Like each channel has a quarter inch and an XLR, but there is a way to use them at the same time but it's yeah, yeah it's mono probably so i'm yeah. recording uh i'm gonna play it back and see how it sounds talk your normal level okay okay <clears throat> this is my normal level of talking the other good thing about the sure mic is for some reason its dimensions and the holder allows it to be like right in my face appropriately more so than the 17 dollar mic yeah 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 man yeah. you know and just look sexy. after all the fucking like audio geek mucking around we did you know, we went back to the basics. It's kind of like after all the fucking handguns I bought and sold, I went back to the one Boston told me to get day one. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Get a fucking Glock 40. Put trading sights on it and be done with it. Get a good holster. Yeah. Be done with it. I went through like six different handguns. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, well, you know. It's fun. Like, you get to go the, on a journey. Like the SM58, like that mic has been in my fucking face my whole life. Why didn't I just get that? You know, yeah. like every yeah. fucking club I played in the 700 plus gigs I played with Bomb, there was a 57 or a 58 in my face, and they're the same mic with a different grill. You know, why didn't I just yeah. fucking get that? It sounds, you know, sounds fucking great. Yeah, it sounds great. <laughs> there you go. Now you can get some more. Yeah. And now it's time for the Freedom Fiends Agenda live call in show. Have you swallowed too much of the state's poison? The Freedom Fiends will stick their fingers down your throat and hold your hair back while you hurl. Call in before they get droned. Right now, live on Freedom Fiends Radio. Yo. Yeah. What's up, Fiends? Fiends? Yo. It's me. Yes. Yo. 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 Nima, you sound especially sexy and good today. Uh, Why I is know, that? Thank you. It's because I'm using the Shure SM58 microphone. Yep. We did a little pregame chat that I actually recorded about oh. uh, I didn't microphone give you choice. To record that, Michael. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to have to send you a lawyer you, letter. You signed a, <laughs> you signed a social contract with me. I can record anything you say or do, <laughs> except the secret that we have that we talked about before that we can never mention again. Ah, yes. <laughs> that we talked about on Pigeon. And I'd like I'd like to pimp the Pigeon tutorial that I spent about 12 hours writing yesterday and rewriting and working with people who proofed it and tech checked it. Uh, if you go to the Freedom Fiends blog, there's an article called How to Do Encrypted Off the Record Instant Messenger with Pigeon. And you look at it and there's a picture of a pigeon and it's not really the bird. It's a, uh, <laughs> what is it? You use it. Uh, We're using it now. Tell me what yeah. it is. It's uh, an encrypted IM client. So you download it. You set it up properly according to the specs on the Freedom Fiends blog that you can find there. So go visit our blog. And then you can add somebody. Um, you actually have to add them 
uh, through asking them a question and there's some steps you go through to make sure that you add each other properly and once you do that um, you can pretty much say anything you want and you two will be the only people in the world who know what was in that conversation the computer also does not keep a record of it um, so nobody can go back and see what was said there uh, and nobody can see what was said there at the time unless you know there's something really crazy like the feds have your computer bugged and they're logging keystrokes um, but uh, other than that, it's pretty secure. Yeah, and it doesn't just protect you against feds. I mean, the fiends tend to be like, it's all governments. Governments are horrible. But there's other people you don't want reading your email, including corporations who will spam you or use it against you in some way, uh, who are basically bad because they're in league with the government. But also hackers. You know, uh, This protects you against hackers. I mean, I would, I would have no problem sending my you know, credit card info to you over Pigeon. Although I'd have no reason to send you my credit card info. But if I did, I'd send it to you over Pigeon and I'd feel secure about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, so um, we've been pimping Pigeon for a while now, but now there's a little how-to. So instead of listening to us it's and trying to, how decipher, to. <laughs> yeah, right, trying to decipher how to do it as we interrupt each other with tales of crocodile and tranny hookers, you can actually go through and read it and, at your pace, step by step. So uh, that's a good resource if you're looking yeah. to, uh, to become a little bit more safer and uh, keep the status out of your life and out of your brain and out of your conversations. Yeah, and something that I didn't mention, well, I did mention that um, the off-the-record plugin for Pigeon, Pigeon by itself is not secure, but there's an OTR off-the-record right. plugin. I also want to mention that there's an IM called Google Talk, which has a mode called OTR, which they call off-the-record, is absolutely mm -hmm. not secure and should not be confused with this. It's off-the-record. It's basically like, you know, uh, over on the side, right. but it's not, right. it's not secure they say it is but it's not right that's just what they named it right <laughs> that's a clever right. trick yeah i remember um there was some company some corporate uh entity i was doing a report on or, or trying to dig into what they were doing see if they were doing something untowards it was pretty much my pre-anarchy days but still um and so what they did was they they called they called what they did the best practices but it was like capitalized and like tm'd so instead of it actually being the legal best practices <laughs> they just called it that that was it's the like of, of fox the news being calling himself fair and balanced fair and which balanced, is right. you know uh, that's a thing. term that's existed for a hundred years it's it's yeah. the goal of journalism allegedly right. but uh <laughs> you know fox is so fair and balanced um well it wasn't even it was a a, a tangential goal like it wasn't mm, originally tangerines. the idea it was tangelos uh, i love tangelos tangelos yeah yeah to be fair and balanced it i think it's sort of a takeoff from the what was it the fair not the fair use um there was that federal law that was like equal time like if you gave one side time on your airspace you had to give the opposing side the equal amount of time um and i think in the end it makes it, it's really hurt journalism right journalists should be truth seekers and should sift through the bs yeah but when, when you do things <laughs> like like promote fair and balanced and objectivity all you end up doing is is let both sides lie yeah equally. yeah and if you actually find someone who's speaking the truth and you spend 40 minutes talking to them and the law requires you to spend 40 minutes talking to someone who lies in the opposite direction of that truth right. you're not right. being fair and balanced no, not at all. Yeah. Because it's not fair for lies to have equal amount of time as the truth. Yeah. Someone said Nima's a bit quiet. Get him worked up. Yeah, I always oh. <laughs> I always set I always start the settings uh -huh. with uh me louder than you because by the end of it okay. you're louder than me. But uh, okay. Damn the government. <laughs> I, th I think I was getting a little bit farther from the mic because I was sort of getting into my groove, but I'll, I'll write up on it now and, and give it the old Kurt Cobain mouth kiss. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Good times. Good times. But yep. um, yeah. Speaking so, of me pigeon, saying that I'm not done with pigeon. You're not done with pigeon. In right. direction. No. Okay. Stay on the pigeon. The, the OTR plugin was invented by Cypherpunks, uh, which is a little known but wonderful group um, that basically made everything that's cool that we pimp. Um, it's it's sort of a spinoff of Anonymous. Not all the members are in Anonymous, and not all. Cy not all cypherpunks are anonymous and not all anonymous are cypherpunks for sure but mm. there is some crossover julian assange is a member wikileaks is one of their spinoffs tor 
uh, was invented by the government, but the way it's used now, which is secure, was a cipher, was a cypherpunks group project. Um, Pirate Bay, uh, BitTorrent, UTorrent, wow. um, Bitcoin. Uh, even, even though they don't know who it is, they they say it has something to do with it. Assassination okay. politics. Um, you know that old theoretical thing from Jim Bell. Uh, uh huh. which isn't a cool thing and we don't use it, but you know, it's something we've mentioned, but it's, it's an interesting <clears throat> concept to add to the philosophical, philosophical conversation. I, I don't promote it. Yeah. But it, it's interesting. Yeah. But basically like, you know, PGP email, uh, pigeon encryption, Tor, uh, BitTorrent, Bitcoin, all spin and and pi and uh WikiLeaks are all spin offs okay. of the same group of people. So basically they're the OGs of everything badass on the web. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and none of them are probably on Facebook, so you shouldn't be sure. <laughs> Although they probably have an admin who posts, you know I mean like Anonymous has a Twitter page, but I really yeah. doubt it's Julian Assange doing the updates, you know. I don't know, man. The benefits still outweigh the detriments for me on Facebook. I I mean granted I didn't have the same types of problems as you at least not yet to where I, you know i don't spend five hours six hours a day on you it. also don't have 20 you didn't have 2200 friends on there how many friends do you have friends quote unquote do you have on facebook it's like seven between seven and eight hundred i think so when it was seven no, or eight hundred for me i was liking it when it got yeah. up to 2200 and you know i had 300 people blocked too so <laughs> at yeah, some point yeah. i would have had 2500 and a lot of people dumped me i mean i think that of the 22 I ended up with before I ditched it, you know, I probably right. had twice that many amount friend me or I friended them at some point, and then either they dumped me or I dumped them. Mm. Well, there's no way – I mean, I guess I could have, but uh, I just got done talking with a cousin of mine in Iran that I've never spoken to in my life before, and we spent two hours talking to each other. And that's probably – you're that probably talking to the CIA. The you're probably thinking you're talking to them, but it's the CIA. Eh. Maybe, but she didn't ask me anything personal, so I doubt it was the CIA. How were you talking? Trying to what were you chatting report. on? Facebook? Yeah, just Man, Facebook chat. you should be chatting on fucking Pigeon. Yeah, we should be, but I mean, hi, how are you doing? I've never <laughs> talked to you before. You're my cousin. Oh, get on Pigeon before you talk to me. Here, Here here's read a, this tutorial yeah. that's in a language you don't really understand that well, <laughs> and follow these 75 steps to, so we can yes, secure Yes, but this. before you can gain access to me. You, See, mu that's you must a, answer that's me these <laughs> questions three. <laughs> what is the airspeed of a swallow? <laughs> um, a laden swallow with a coconut. Uh, yeah, someone said thank those guys for their service, the uh, cypherpunks. I would yes, agree. Yes, I thank them for their yeah. service, totally. That is appropriate. Yeah. I mean, really, yeah. if it weren't for those people, the internet would be Facebook. You know, it'd be, you know, actually, that's the thing I want to get into uh, is that China is about to require real name registration for internet access. Hmm. And so they're. Their minister of culture or whatever is saying, here's the quote, only that way can our internet be healthier, more cultured, and safer. Ah, government speak, huh? <laughs> of course they our do. Well, it's they? our, it's their internet. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's not wow. the internet. It's our internet. Well, well, logistically, how is this going to work differently? I mean, I guess I could have a pseudonym and get a Time Warner account, but you know, my Time Warner account is, well, it's supposed to be under my name, but because I talked to an outsourcer in India when I set up my account, it's actually Mima Vadadni. But, um, <laughs> I mean, most people, they're set up with Time Warner or Comcast or whatever, and they've got their actual name, and they probably give out their social security number. Um, how is that different than what China is going to do, other than the force of the law? Well, yeah, I mean, and that's for maybe it's to be on the internet. Like you know, it's illegal to post anything on the internet without ah, uh, okay. a real name. Okay. Like kind of like how Google is and YouTube are pushing people right now. Like Google, yes. YouTube just suddenly made me start using my real name and they knew my real name because do you remember a while back? I was like, you, we opened a cast with, you were like, what are you up to? And I'm like, Oh, I've been doing this really cool thing with Google Plus. It's called like Google ownership. It's where you can prove that you own, that you're the webmaster of a website by putting this little piece of code on it and then registering with Google. And then <laughs> it helps your Google rankings. 
I fell mm-hmm. for it, man. I totally fell for it. Wow. And like, you know, I didn't really put it together, but like three weeks after that, suddenly YouTube and Google were like, is your real name Michael W. Dean? Click huh. yes to confirm and that you want to use this. If not, you must provide these reasons three why you won't. Yeah. Yeah, YouTube asked me that and I just gave them a reason. Uh and it was it was an easy reason. Like one of the reasons was this is the name of a performing artist or band that you are a part of. And so I clicked that. <laughs> like, yeah, that's Nima the Nima V. That's my stage name. I can get away with that. Mango I says mean, in Soviet America America Google pawns pawn owns you. Is it guess, owns or yes. pawns? How do you say that? It's it's pwn. Pwn. Like, cor- I knew like that. corn pwn. I knew yeah, that. Yeah. I forgot. Yeah, we're not care. big gamers. My, I was, I was very saddened when I went to visit my family at how much my ass got kicked by my little brothers whenever we played video games. Like, I taught them about video games, and I played Halo and Madden with them, and they just demolished me. I guess that's good because I'm grown up now and I don't play a lot of video games. See, that wouldn't know. bother me because that's not a real world skill. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah you know, when the not. when the shit hits the fan. Uh, I'd rather have a bunch of ammo and food and ability to shoot and uh, know how to make wow. a fire than uh, you know make a fire from a piece of flint and, and a piece of wood and some you know caveman Although stuff. Although I, I suppose they would be better drone pilots than me if we had some freedom fighting drones. <clears throat> Probably, maybe. <laughs> Those but, are uh, skills I, that transfer. I I think that there will be a time sooner when um, shooting and making a fire will be more useful sooner than piloting um freedom drones maybe but luckily frank has that real world skill too i was very proud to uh, go into his room and see his collection of guns and his collection on the walls of his targets with some very very tight circles so good good for so him. i wanted to talk about fear fear since we just yeah. brought it up yeah um, but we don't we don't want to make you afraid. No, 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 no. Uh, DJ was reading this book last night by Michael Crichton. You know who he is, right? Mm-hmm. Wrote Jurassic he, Park, right? Yeah, wrote Jurassic Park. Um, is sometimes kind of considered a right winger because he doesn't always buy the left wing thing. But he's not an mm-hmm. anarchist and not a and not a libertarian. But he's he's kind of politically beyond uh, definition. You know, he basically just tries to find the truth and isn't influenced by crap. Um, She's reading a book right now, I think it's called State of Fear, which is actually about um, the, not that global warming is a scam, but that most of the data that's presented to you is a scam and cherry-picked to have agendas of big money people and governments, which is true. And I agree with Kevin McKernan of like, you know, he's a scientist and I asked him and he's like, you know, I really don't know, and I don't like to weigh in on it because it's such a weighted thing, and nobody really knows. I mean, it looks the data looks like you know it is happening slowly, but it could be sunspots. There's not enough real time recent data, or, or even like ability to go back and check it with core samples to know for sure if people are doing this or not. So, um, but this book, State of Fear. I mean, a lot of it's about how there are hidden. Uh, you know, he, he, like when you donate money to some feel good cause, especially if it's environmentalism or animal mm-hmm. rights, mm-hmm. Uh, he he contends that you are basically funding terrorism. You know, when you give money to PETA, like 5% of that, he says, is somehow getting fu- sun- fu- funneled to ELF, you know, people that blow up labs and things like that. And huh. when you, he says that when you give, uh, you know, money to the World Wildlife Foundation, you know, like 2% of it somehow gets somewhere. It's the same thing with like, you know, a lot of in the 60s and 70s, a lot of like, you know, moneyed Boston, Massachusetts Catholics, you know, sent money to Sinn Sinn Féin. How do you say it? Sinn Féin, I think. Or like even various like like even various, um, you know, Irish charities that didn't even have that name in them, but basically they were funding the IRA without knowing Mm. it. And, you know, Mm. when you give to certain like, Middle Eastern, uh, you know, like help this, help that. You're actually funneling it to Hamas or whatever, um, or something in Gaza. You know, not saying, not saying all those people call themselves freedom fighters. Every single one of those people, but there are a lot of hidden connections of like, you know, you give money to this foundation, you're probably Mm -hmm. funding violence when you would never do that otherwise without knowing Mm -hmm. it. And the same thing with like the U.S. government or you know probably any kind of right wing think tank. (laughs) You're probably helping design drones or 
Yeah. yeah. You fund assassinations. Who knows? Right but, policies that will fund them taking your guns and et cetera. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah. but his book, State of Fear, it has this character that's giving this kind of eloquent speech, and it's one of the good guys in the book. And he's basically saying, and this is based on fact. The thing about Michael Crichton is it's incredibly heavily researched. You know, like uh -huh. the stuff on how they made the DNA, you know, took the DNA out of the amber trapped mosquito and made dinosaurs from it. Like that's from the science of how they were working on doing things like that mm -hmm. in Jurassic Park. Um, <clears throat> but. Yeah, lost you for a minute there. That was me. So there's this character who's giving the speech that this is, and this is based on on research. It's like between 1989, November, I think it was 1989, when you know when the Cold War basically ended, when they opened up some holes in the Berlin Wall and people came flooding through. When that happened, from that point until September 2001, September 11th, 2001. If you look through newspapers and magazines in America, worldwide, but especially in America and in Western countries, there are very few incidences in articles of words like, you know, crisis, apocalypse, you know, uh, threat, things like that. Like the hmm. words that are really, really common right now, they were really common during the Cold War. And they're right. really common after September 11th, 2001. Right. But there was a period there from 89 to 2001 where, like, there wasn't an enemy. It was like, mm -hmm. la, 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 things are good, things are good, things are good. And that's how the press was. Hmm. And whether or not that was manufactured or it was just, you know, never let a crisis go to waste, ever since then, it's been back to fear, 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 fear from every direction. And if right. you look at the existence of Project Mockingbird, uh, I believe it was what it's called, which was like the CIA's efforts in the 50s to start infiltrating uh, media. That's, right. you know, that's kind of, that has a lot to do with it. And, and yeah. who knows it was just the CIA. A lot of it's just, you know, you know, from journalism, it's like, oh, that sells, you know, fear sells. But basically, governments want to keep us in a constant state of fear because it enables them to say, oh, well, we will protect you from that fear. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Well, uh, I thought, though, in that interim period between the Cold War and 9-11, they were trying out different ways to make you scared. I mean, wasn't that when the drug war sort of ramped up and yeah. crack came out and they were like, uh, you know, d d didn't they have a photo op of the first lady in a tank a on tank. Like, the, yeah. the streets of South Central or something yes, like that? Literally. Like, and, I uh, will knock down your. Yeah. The president's wife will knock down your house. You know, basically, it'd be <laughs> like having Michelle, Michelle Obama on a drug drone flying like right, right. <laughs> with a cowboy hat yeah yeah i'd much rather see black dynamite fuck the president's wife than uh see the president's wife knock down did the he? drug dealer's house he did he did in the movie uh the original movie black dynamite is that the new he, cartoon it's done by the boondocks guy yes yes but i saw like that, 20 was, minutes uh, of that the other day i thought it was hilarious and dj yeah, hates it, it. but dj kind of likes the boondocks it was weird hmm. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. The live action movie, which inspired the cartoon, uh, it was hilarious. And the, the end is him going to the White House. He beats the crap out of Nixon and then he bones his wife. Uh, it's the best ending to a movie in the history of the world. You right. know, back to yeah. cypherpunks for a minute for a parenthetical. Yes. Um, they're also they also started the Electronic Frontier, the Electronic Frontier Foundation, EFF, you know, the privacy organization. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, Helped create the alt, created the alt hierarchy on Usenet, which was basically the beginning of anyone could do anything on the internet and start their own free speech group. Way, but you know, mm -hmm. before the web, like we're talking like eighties, late eighties, you know, mm -hmm. or late nineties. Wow. Sorry, um, and they contributed to the GNU license, the GNU license, which you know contributed GNU. to GNU slash Linux. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So awesome, um, awesome. yeah, good for them. Um, so back to the fear thing. Here's yeah. my question. Does it serve governments with what's happening right now? Because what's happening right now, it kind of feels to me like the cow's gotten out of the barn and is running around in its own poo compared to the, what the government wants. Because, you know, right now you've got millions of Americans fearing that the government can even do what it says it's going to do. And I'm not talking about mm -hmm. anarchists, voluntarists, or libertarians. I'm talking about Joe Sixpack, who believes you must go out and vote, you know, doesn't believe 
Congress can fix the fiscal cliff thing that they made. Doesn't believe that, you know, they can create jobs, which they can't unless they get out of the way. You know, basically the average person right now believes the government is ineffective and effed up. Do you think that serves the government? I don't think it does. I think it's good. Uh, yeah, I don't think it serves the government at all because that's how that's how you can open up people's minds to an alternative. If they lose the concept of the government as their protector or as an efficient person who can provide for them, then they must gain the desire or the curiosity to find an alternative. Um, you know, too too often people though fall into a, a trap of just tweaking the system and saying that, well, it's the people in the government. It's Barack Obama, and if Mitt Romney was running the government, it would be different. But uh, I don't think that that kind of fear, you know, the fear that your government protector won't be able to help you, I don't think that kind of fear plays into the government's hands at all. Yeah. I think the cow is out of the barn, man. Well, I hope it is. I hope it is. And certainly more so than before, if anything, because because of the freer flow of information than it's ever been before. Um, although, uh, you know, there's another aspect of fear, too, um, that I don't know. We, we, we should maybe get off on a tangent about this, too. Uh, some people... Uh, who are sort of in alt media, the Alex Jones conspiracy uh-huh. theory types. Some people think the government, or at least a, a small uh-huh. group of elite people, are all powerful, and they don't fear the inefficiency and the failure of government to control society. Um, but rather, they fear that that government can uh, pull every string and control all of society. And instead of wanting benevolent things for humanity, they want humanity to die horrible deaths and reduce the population by 80% and on and on and on. Uh, yeah, I, I was going to might gonna, play into the government's hands. I was going to bring that up. And Alex Jones, I mean, in a way, I'm glad he exists because he's so many people's like foot in the door to the path that leads to us. You know, basically, mm-hmm. half, probably a third of the people that I ask, how did you find the Freedom Fiends? They say, well, I found Alex Jones, and then he turned me on to Ron Paul, and then somehow I found the Freedom Fiends, and then quite st- stopped listening to Alex Jones. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, Alex Jones recently said, Barack Obama's plan is to take all the guns, and then they're going to literally round us up into camps probably within six months. And, and Alex Jones said the other day that he's had 20 or 30 people come up to him at Democratic events when he's filming and talking to people. And, and say to him, you know, like quietly on the side, like when, when you're in the camp, I'm going to rape you and then kill you. Like Alex Jones says, people say that to him often and mean it. And I'm like, really? Well, it's probably frat kids who mean it as a joke. It's people who get drunk uh, in their basement and watch Alex Jones on public access. And right, and, and, and are on totally some private. fuck with that guy if we ever on, see him. They're on some private Facebook group called, you know, like, let's fuck with Alex Jones. Yeah, yeah probably. Yeah, exactly. That, that's what I would think. I don't think anybody would ever say that with a straight face. Like, do that. I mean, unless you're in a situation where you're actually in the prison, I don't think you actually tell somebody that you plan to rape them when they are in prison, unless you're A, fucking with them, or are B, in a shit-talking match, and it's gotten to that point. Well, which, you know, Alex Jones kind of shit-talks to the world, so people would want to shit-talk back to him. Because you know, from the little bit of <clears throat> fame that you have, and I know from the little bit more of fame that I had before, combined with the fame, the little bit of fame that we have now, that... um you know, it's kind of best summed up with that Homer Palooza episode where Homer becomes the cannonball guy and everyone wants ah. his autograph. And Bart says, Dad, what's it like to be famous? And Bart says, it's great, son. People know your name, but you don't know the you don't know theirs. <laughs> and it's more than just people knowing your name. When you're out there in any kind of media, even as small as what we do, people think they know you and have a relationship with you. And it comes from like... You know, yeah. them listening to the streaming feed for seven days on end, which people do. And, yeah. you know, we, you and I are talking and they start talking to us in their head, which I, I do when I listen to people, you know, yeah. I scream at the TV. Um, but if and you do that good. enough, I think, I think people is. should totally do that. It should be a conversation in their head because otherwise they're just passively being indoctrinated. We want yeah. people to, yeah. to, to talk back and counterpoint and whatever, whatever, whatever they can think of in their head when they listen to us and when you listen to anybody else. That's a good skill and a good habit. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it can also get kind of weird to where people think they know you and have a relationship with you. 
uh, especially like, you know, sometimes you've chatted a couple of times with me, and there are fiend fans that I'd say we have some kind of relationship with, but, oh, totally. um, you know, they're generally the people that a lot of them are the people that I have on my, on my, uh, pigeon instant messenger list. I mean, I have like probably 12 people on there now. They're the volunteer fiend freedom force. You know how yeah, basically <laughs> if you small do work town for police us. departments will have volunteers <laughs> that'll go out and yeah. park the, the drone car and all that. Yeah. Basically, if you do work for us, you have a relationship with us. Which is, you know, <laughs> that's all about like maximizing amount of hours we have in a day. But um, oh, yeah. and Sean Duvalli has a new name for those. He calls them worm wranglers. Worm wranglers. I like it. I like it. <laughs> it's a new name. It's anyone that's on the um, golden floppy disk of redemption that has done something more than donate. Who actually does yeah. some time stuff or like some work stuff? They are worm wranglers. <laughs> Speaking of which, did did you get my mom's gifts? She sent you. <laughs> I just got an email from DJ moments ago. It says, I picked up our package this morning at the oh, post yeah. office. If it's fudge, she sent enough to make us ill. Yay. Love you. <laughs> Hope your podcast was wonderful. <laughs> Is it fudge? There may be some fudge in there, but also, uh, and what she gave me and Jessica and a bunch of other people were coasters she had made. Freedom ah. Fiends coasters. So if you really? like them, maybe we could nice. uh, merch them too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then there was that. one that was, of course, the worm image. And it was, it was cute. Yeah, that's awesome, yeah. man. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. My mom made um, stage jack jackets for my, my band Bomb. We, nice, we, nice. I thought they were incredibly cheesy, but the other guys in the band loved them and wore them. I didn't wear them. I was always bare shirted <laughs> back when I was skinny. But right, like, right. they kind of looked like, you know, Sergeant Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club, like psychedelic military jackets with like the word you know british mill like world war ii officers mm -hmm. with brushes or something you know <laughs> with epaulets nice. sewn on the on the shoulders uh nice and, well, uh, and then like glitter paint that said bomb on the back <laughs> <laughs> that's great and i was like thanks mom and i wouldn't wear them and then like three three dates later we're in a different city and like jay and doug were wearing them and like loving it and chicks were like that's so weird and cool where did you get those <laughs> michael's mom yeah <laughs> nice nice but um back to fear and how it plays into the government's hands i would say that that believing that there's this vast global elite that uh pours out chemtrails and has plans and everything that they've wanted to have happen has happened and and the collapse the economic com collapse is basically like a Planned. set of dominoes that they set up to fall in exactly the order that it's falling i would say that plays into statist hands and it promotes the statist philosophy that a group of people can centrally plan uh, vast systems with um with an infinite number of inputs and know how it's going to play out and be able to control it to their to their benefit um if you believe that then then i don't know if you can believe in anarchy i don't know if you can believe the thought that that self-order is better than top-down order well i don't know if believing it's better is the same as you know not believing that it's not happening did that come out right i don't mm -hmm. know what you know well, when well, alex jones um when when mark stevens called me a COINTELPRO agent I felt mm -hmm. like I'd arrived because the only person I'd heard called that before was Alex Jones, and he's commonly <laughs> called that. And I was like, okay, yeah. you're, you're nobody till somebody calls you an FBI plant. Um, there are people who think Alex Jones is a COINTELPRO agent. I don't think he is. Uh, and like I said, I'm kind of glad he exists because he's, he's part of people's path for liberty a lot of times. And he's on major radio stations, which is uh, – well, you know, I, neat, I think there a is thing. a big benefit to showing that the government is evil. That's a that's a very good first step to to make on your. That's why I like nine eleven trutherism, even though I don't really believe it. I really, in my heart of hearts, and I, I've looked at all the research, and like it's a lot of blurry pictures with red circles on them, and people saying this proves something. Um, but the fact that so many people believe that the government would do that. I think is useful because the government would do that and they've done things like that. You know, they've the project Northwoods, they wanted to do that. And Kennedy said no. And somehow later Kennedy, you know, three months later, Kennedy was dead and nobody really knows how he got killed. So who right, knows? Right.
Right. Well, it reminds me of that uh, Robert Higgs quote that's been bouncing around on Facebook that I guess you would know about <laughs> lately. I <But, laughs> don't know uh, what that is. It's, it's a rough pair. Robert Higgs is a, is a really good anarchist libertarian writer. And Facebook I know. Is I'm kidding about Facebook. Go, yeah, what's Facebook? <laughs> <laughs> so, it's a thing, where, uh, it's a thing where, you, where you chat with your friends on uh, CIA servers. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but it's fun, and I, I don't hate it yet, and so I'm still going to do it. But uh, there's been a great Robert Higgs quote bouncing around uh, i'm going to paraphrase it roughly but basically he goes through all these different horrible government massacres the holocaust pol pot you know that whole thing that that gun rights people always do uh and he says that um you know the history of mayhem and destruction from governments is well documented the the thought that anarchy would be full of mayhem and destruction is purely conjectural uh, you know, the burden of proof should be on the statists. An- anarchy doesn't mean death and destruction, um, I- except in in people's minds. Well, I think the they would argue has meant death and destructions in real life all the time. I have a I have a an argument that they'd give you that statists would give you that I don't agree with. But how would you counter this? Um, a lot of times, when for some reason the police aren't around and it's known that they won't come, people start breaking shit and starting fires. Now, the interesting thing is the police aren't usually around anyway, but it's like, you know, if, uh, if, this, if, it's, if it's a state of emergency, the power is out, and the police are on the other side of town dealing with, uh, you know, trying to protect some event from some disaster, natural or human, a lot of times people in certain neighborhoods will riot. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Although it's weird because like the police weren't there anyway and they didn't riot the day before, you know. Well, to me that that's a that's a problem caused by the state of statism in the first place, right? I mean, in an anarchic society, you wouldn't have this vague uh public group called the police that decides what what part of town to cover based on political motives. You would have uh, multiple competing private security entities that would base what parts of town to cover based on market need and who could pay for it. Um, and also, you wouldn't have people that, that grew up thinking that the only reason that they don't do bad things is because of police and because of the state. People don't have an internal sense of morality. At least they're not taught that uh, on a societal level. They're taught don't do things that are against the law. So, um, so those are problems created by the state in the first place. And, and yeah, if you got rid of, if you push the button to end the state now, you might have those kinds of problems, but I don't think you would have them in perpetuity. I think those would be problems that could be solved, uh, by people doing voluntary things and figuring out ways to solve those problems that didn't involve resorting, resorting to institutionalized violence. Yeah. Anyway. Um, I have some fun stuff. You don't have a follow up for that. No, you're what would, right. What would, this, what would the status say about what? <laughs> about what I just said. He would just I say, "Wow." What'd you say? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was asking you to you say something, and uh, then you you followed it up and you answered my question. So, ah. um, this episode is called "Make Love, Not Law," and ah. you added <laughs> the subtitle is "Law Is Over If You Want," which is uh, <laughs> a takeoff on a John Lennon campaign and song called uh, yeah. "War Is Over If You Want." He actually paid yeah. for billboards that said that. During Vietnam. Nice, nice. Yeah. Although I guess we have to, for the for the more informed, you have to clarify that with government law, because you know, natural law, anarchic law. Yeah, anarchists don't want laws. They just don't want government laws. They they don't want laws to cease to exist. Yeah, they just want the government laws and government enforcement of those laws to cease to exist. Yeah. You know, I kind of wonder if governments are behind things like, um, you know selling t-shirts and having ad campaigns that say anarchy and have like a picture of a burning building on them or something like that. You know, that kind of branding of the word anarchy. Maybe I haven't seen those. Are, do those exist like a burning building? Well, let's see. There's, um, you know, something that comes to mind is there's a, uh, there's a body spray. I think it's by ax or someone like that. It's called anarchy. Ah, uh-huh. And like, yeah. you know, the, uh, the ad for it is a bunch of young people breaking laws, like not murdering ah, anybody, uh-huh. but, you know, like skateboarding where they're not supposed to and like knocking something out of someone's hand and, you know, uh, like uh-huh. yelling at old people that are shocked, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know if 
you could say governments are behind it, but you could say the establishment is behind it. The state it, right? is I mean, behind it because it's it's horizontal enforcement. It's it's horizontal enforcement, and w- what acts is owned by like some big uh, conglomerate, like Unilever or something like that. And so, uh, those big corporate interests always have an incentive to keep the status quo going because in the status quo, they're big wigs, they're big yeah. time. They make lots to of bring money. to bring it back to like countering the Alex Jones theory of you know. There are seven Jews who drink blood and control the world or something like that. <laughs> and secretly have lizard tongues and are from yeah. a different planet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't think that's what it is. I think it's more that just like systems tend to go in a certain way when they're started in a certain way. It's inertia. You know, I news newscasters and, and reporters love to report fear, not because you know, some hidden master is sending them action item list, but because it's what sells, because it's what Mm -hmm. sold before, because the people who own the station built it because, you know, and I I do think there is some agenda there. I mean, like, look at NBC, you know, it's, it's owned by the military industrial complex. It's owned by GE. Mm -hmm. And, Mm -hmm. and they even make fun of it. Like on, on 30 rock, there's a, there's this, um, this hipster clothing company called like, um, you know, beyond Brooklyn or something like that yeah, or underground yeah. Brooklyn. And, and they're actually owned by Halliburton, but they're selling right. like t-shirts with Che Guevara on them, you know, just, yeah, but, yeah. but Halliburton just wants to have well, their and, hand in everything. Yeah. And Liz Lemon thinks it, the story is that it's like sustainably made by people who get paid a living wage and all this other kind of lefty feel goody. No, stuff. it's made by like Vietnamese children at gunpoint or something. <laughs> right. right. Yeah, yeah, so I got some more statist funny autocorrected mishaps because I know we Ooh, like those. Some nice little tidbits of funny. All right. Yeah, for it. try this in your Microsoft Word. And I'm using an older version of Word. It might be different, but um, misspell bureaucrats. And I don't even know how bad. I've never been able to spell that word. But last week I said that it suggested bear cats as a replacement for bureaucrats. Right. <laughs> um, when I was writing the article about uh, you know the tutorial for Pigeon, and it might have been my spell check in firefox or in word i don't remember which but um i like to use the word government you know which is how dale gribble says government it's Mm -hmm. g-u-b apostrophe (laughs) mint gub mint yeah the the suggested replacement for that was gunpoint (laughs) and even better that's about right yeah and even better government without the uh apostrophe just g-u-b-m-i-n-t the suggested Uh replacement was submitting Oh, they got a little deeper with that. I know, man. They? Gunpoint and submitting for and submitting. government. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Isn't that bizarre? Yeah. Bizarre and hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Tasty and delicious. Yeah. Yeah. So well, we mine have is some... always anima whenever I type Nima. Yeah, Nima. Says, yeah, Did that... you mean anima? <laughs> so I, I guess I'm the freedom anima to get out all that status <laughs> bullshit. You're the, the coca drilling tranny hooker <laughs> anima. The naughty nursey yes. dressed I'm as a cop. The naughty nursey of the, the freedom. The, mo- it is the, the freedom movement when it's that, right? The naughty, this- the the naughty nursey who no, the naughty lady cop in drag, uh, giving you a coca drill enema of freedom. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Last night was a lot of fun, Michael. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> I, uh, my uniform is still drying. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So your gun for everyone video oh, has yeah. uh, 3,500 views, 143 likes, and three dislikes. Squares. Oh, good. I'm three, glad three we got squares. Some, I'm really glad we yeah. got some more dislikes. I was hoping for that. Um, yeah, yeah. Good times. Um, it was a lot of fun, and I'm glad it, it's being well received. Uh, didn't get the Lou Rockwell bump. Um, I but- I built that. I built that. I made it happen. I got on the fucking, yeah, I mean, no, I, I'm not saying like, give me credit. I'm saying like how important the behind the scenes catalyst is with anything. And yeah. this is a good lesson for people who are like, I'd like to help with Liberty. Well, I don't want to make fun of them. I'd like to help with Liberty, but I don't know what to do. You know, basically find someone who's doing something you wish you were doing and help them help promote them. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, mm-hmm. you know, bands need roadies, bands need managers, bands need bookers. You know, if yep. I used to say that if the band bomb, the band bomb was the music I wanted to hear. And if that band already existed, I would have been their roadie or their sound yeah. man or something, yeah. you know? Yeah. Hell, bands need fans. I mean, word of yeah. mouth, right? Uh, and it, I guess these days it doesn't even have to be word of mouth. It's word of internet type things about how great things yeah. that you like are. Uh, share them. Um, yeah. I mean, that's, that's 101, but uh, it is more important than you realize. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Someone, someone's trying the government thing I'm on the <laughs> nice, chat room. Nice. Yeah, and I'm really glad to put media like this out there in the world because it's so sorely needed. Um, I was so yeah. sad to see that, that uh, Hollywood video out there, the black and white people standing in front of their glamour shots, backdrops, um, some of my favorite comedians and actors saying demand not that they from were, your leaders. You're not saying that, black people and white people, although it was. You're saying a black and white video to make it look hipster or something. You yes, know? yes. Yeah. Colorless video to make it look uh, – I, I think it was trying important. to make it look more dramatic. Make it look yeah. important. Yeah. Right, right, right. And, I mean, Ron Swanson. Oh, that people. really disgusted it's me, man. Hey, Ron, I'm not a libertarian. I just play one on TV, Swanson. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the actor uh, who plays Beyonce, him. Man. Beyonce, Beyonce with her little uh, fake tears. I don't know if they're fake or Amy not. Amy Poehler, but, Amy Poehler. Mm -hmm. You know, I kind of feel like yeah. this thing was filmed a year ago, and they were just waiting for the right time to roll it out. Well, I mean, they say Sandy Hook and Newton, but I guess they could have added that uh, after the fact. It'd be but, funny uh, if it didn't match. Yeah, yeah this, let's, this terrible let's think thing. About at, how rich at, it would be. This How terrible thing that happened at Sandy Hook. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's that thing on another thing? There's a thing on Thirty Rock where they pre-tape the disaster memorial show, and Jenna sings the song oh, of like, uh -huh. and help the people who had the thing that happened happen <laughs> to, to them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and and I don't know. I guess they don't come out and say. Gun control. They don't even use that old bromide common sense laws, uh, which I think is just silly. They do say this at the end. They say, demand a plan from our leaders. Now think about the internal inconsistency of that. If they're your leaders, you're demanding that your leaders control you. It, doesn't yeah. it just seem really, really no, odd? It's, and there's even a more like false thing in there of you're, you're thinking you can control the leaders. Right, right. You can't. Exactly. If they're if they're your leaders, how can you control them? No, I mean, you elected Obama. Y'all elected Obama. Everyone in that video elected Obama because he said he'd legalize pot, and he stepped <laughs> up medical rate marijuana raids. You know, they don't do yeah. what you tell them to. Right, right. And and uh, the Department of Justice right now is mulling over how they're going to stop the nullification of pot laws in Washington State and Colorado. <laughs> Someone on the on the chat room said they they tried government on their iPhone and it said gunning. <laughs> man, this right. almost seems like you know if I were Alex Jones, I'd be like, man, this is all pre planned. This is weird. It's like every everything that you put in as a misspelling of a state word, it turns it into a, a more statist word. <laughs> more statist, right? Right. Um, you know, I had my gay uncle come out on this whole gun control tip when we went to visit. He came out on gun control. Uh, I guess I should stop using that. Damn, gay is always running phrases. Uh, no, he, he was <laughs> like in gay. Gay used to mean happy. I, I heard my dad when I was a little no, kid. No, my dad would say like, "I'm feeling gay today." You know, because he grew up in the Great Depression. <laughs> right, right, right. No, he was in the other room. That's what I meant by coming out. He was. It wasn't the closet, but he, he was, was coming in, in. Yeah, he was coming in. He was in a different room of the house. We went to visit my um, my granddad on my mom's side, um, and so we were there and we were chatting, and he was he was absent, and then all of a sudden he walks in and and looks at my mom, and the first thing he says is he goes he goes. Does your husband have a semi-automatic rifle or an automatic rifle? Does he have one? <laughs> he just like stares at her, and she's like, "I don't know." And and and, he, and I was like, "Well, I'm gonna get one very soon, or at least I hope to." And he's like, "Nobody needs those. Nobody needs one of those." And, and man, and, my, and, and we had this conversation, and my wife was quiet the whole time. But then afterwards, she goes, "You know what I wanted to say? I wanted to say to respond to that. You, nobody needs any one of those rifles. With well, you don't need a dick in your ass. But who are we to deny you one?" because <laughs> <laughs> it really is i mean it, it's not a need it's a want kind of a thing and there's no moral right of any man to deny another man of what he wants and you know a lot of times when you when you use an analogy like that you know like i'd say to the a woman like well you don't need all those shoes but they'd yeah. say well shoes don't kill but you really couldn't say that with dick in the ass because dick in the ass can kill now <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. I suppose I can. <laughs> um, you but, know, Lou uh, Rockwell. Speaking of dicks, don't give you AIDS. People square. give you AIDS. <laughs> you know, Lou Rockwell gave you the bump 
that led to me uh, for a rap video that led to me meeting you. But like now, every time we do something cool, we send it to him, and there's just crickets, man. And I think it's because. I called him 108. I said he's 108 <laughs> years old. I think someone pointed that out to him, and I think he's like, F those guys. Maybe, like, he wouldn't even maybe. say that. He'd be like, I will no longer support the <laughs> He wouldn't even say He wouldn't even think the word F. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I could see him. He's he's not as square as, as I think your image in your head is. So, you know, I think that, like, I can't even watch Parks and Rec now. And I can't watch after ah, seeing that. And I can't yeah. I can't watch anything by Peyton Oswald, who used to be my favorite comedian. Who you said well, isn't he, that he funny, wasn't he wasn't in that video, did he? Uh, no, but he's been tweeting. One, he's been tweeting that the government needs to round up gun owners, like and put oh them in prison. God. Oh my yeah. god! Wow. Yeah. Although you know, so he's basically real, calling for a new Holocaust. Yeah. Good you know job, the um, Peyton Oswald. <laughs> the. Uh, He's probably really ashamed of one of his home videos has him firing full auto weapons at a range and loving it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he actually a tricks, does a, a simple camera trick in the video. Like he borrowed someone's mansion and it said it was his house for this. He mm -hmm. probably lives in a studio apartment, but because uh, <laughs> everyone in Comedy Central does. But, um, but he in it, he's like wandering through the many rooms in his mansion. And one of them is he opens this door and then goes into the gun range, which actually isn't in this building, but they made it look like he has one in his home with full auto weapons. Ah, uh, um, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah, I guess that's, that's how I felt. I didn't see the pot and Oswald thing or hear his tweets, but after watching this video with, uh, all these people that I really like to watch their media. Um, and I just thought, you know, I really don't want to, support them anymore and you've read books attended lectures and you know the constitution well enough to know it's a well-crafted blueprint to create an ever-increasing federal empire but there's still one thing missing buttons freedom fiends now has buttons we have freedom fiends anarchy gumbo and two designs for guns and weed the road to freedom wear them with pride use them to start conversations with statists it's only six dollars for four buttons including shipping go to freedomfiends.com and click on the link at the top that says buttons i don't know if that means right. not watching the media and i don't know if that's that's an initial reaction and i'm gonna get over it or, or no what. i'm gonna do it i'm gonna not do it I, I i can't and it's not like i will vote with my wallet because i don't really pay anything to watch them anyway but um you know, I guess I do because I watch them on Hulu and then I watch the ads, but I mute the you ads. Watch the ads on Hulu. I mute yeah. the ads. So I don't really do any, you know, contribute. Well, I have I have Hulu Plus and Netflix, so I do pay a monthly fee. Well, Hulu nuts, Hulu Plus, you still get ads. What's the deal you with do. that? You get you less? Do. You may get less ads. I don't know. You get about two to three. It depends on the show. Or you get like, access to things that you wouldn't get on the free version. That, that is true, yeah, and that's why we did it. You get, uh, you get, for instance, the whole series of certain shows. Like, you can watch okay. The Office from the first Regardless, episode to the last episode. I don't care. I asked, yeah. but I don't care. Um, <laughs> so, anyway, because um, you don't even watch the stuff on Netflix that you have that I tell you to watch anyway, because you don't have time. I do. I watch all I'm kidding. So, <laughs> uh, no, but I can't watch those people. I can't watch a Pat Oswalt like home, you know, stand up comedy thing anymore. I'm just gonna be thinking, you want me yeah. dead. Yeah. You want yeah. me dead. I can't enjoy that. But so I can't, it's not a matter I can't not listen to uh Kanye West songs or Jay Z songs that have Beyonce in them though. And uh how, why why would Jay Z let his wife go and do that? I guess he can't control her, but why would Jay Z I mean, stand up and pimp for Obama, man? Uh, yeah, that guy says yeah. 99 pro you know that guy's so anti-cop in a lot of his songs but you know he's pro president which means you're pro cop well it's the ring of power it's the ring of power right jay-z feels like now he's on the top of the world he's in that same group. yeah I'm, I'm not into the whole illuminati thing but um but he does feel like he's as high as he can go and nobody can touch him right now he's got a line in a new song um called click it's a kanye west song with sean big sean and jay-z um and he's got this line that says you know uh about somebody tat tattletelling on me he goes who are you gonna tell we're top of the totem pole you know, yeah like, he parties at the white house me. you know how can you party at the white house and then criticize the president i guess right. unless you're like you know al-qaeda who've been invited to, right or right. you know so it, partied it's, with it, reagan it, Right, right. Well, he's 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 in the White House now. That that's just it, isn't it? It's it's when you are in uh, power, you're going to always be well, conservative Willie, and not radical. Didn't Willie Nelson smoke a joint on the roof of the White House with Amy Carter? 
<laughs> I sure as hell and, hope and so. And Joey but, Ramone uh, or something. I don't know. Sniff some glue with Joey Ramone and I th- Amy I Carter. I think that's the have a urban three-way. legend, but, but you know more about that than me. I wasn't even alive. <sighs> so <laughs> Diane Feinstein on her concealed carry permit. I'm ah, going to um, yes. post that video. And I was thinking it's really – when gun grabbing politicians who are surrounded by armed guards, you know, we've talked about that before and how hypocritical that is, but it's not only hypocritical, it's it's very let them eat cake. Because basically they're saying, you know, well, if you're rich and you can afford armed guards who are licensed, we're cool with it. You know, they mm-hmm. pretty much mm-hmm. are. I mean, would the president say, you know, Beyonce shouldn't have armed guards? No, of course not. You know, and right. she's a private citizen. Um or, you know, Dick Cheney, should he have armed? Well, he's really, you know, he's the head of the military and industrial complex still. But, yeah, you know, to um, me, to me, it's it's class warfare. It's a good example of libertarian class warfare theory liber- that, that oh, the real yeah. class warfare is between those who have political power and those who don't. Um, because those who have political power can have bodyguards. They can have secret. Well, service. people that have money and no political power can have bodyguards, too. That's, and, that's the same and, thing. They're politically favored, right? Yeah. And but it's president, you know, politicians who say the common man shouldn't be able to have a gun are basically saying, well, you're hungry. Why don't you eat cake? You know, <laughs> yeah. like, oh, Which, you need protection. Why don't you pay one hundred and fifty dollars an hour for bodyguard? Who's armed? Right. 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 Exactly. I don't if even know what they well, cost. It's probably well, four hundred an hour for a good one to start. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's just really sad, and and I try to explain that to people, and that was really what a gun for everyone was about. Was it's about self defense should be for everyone. Everyone should ha- has a right to it, a natural right to it, and and if you hinder them from from exercising that natural right, you're doing something immoral and violent. You're being the violent one in society. You're adding violence and to to what's already in the world. Any kind of reduction in crime or violence that you would have is negated by the violence you imposed on other people to prevent them from defending themselves. Leo um, just I, uh, typed in the in the chat room. They're saying if you're poor, we want your guns before we raise your taxes even more. <laughs> is that an Andre line? Is that in the Obama feet stink video? It sounds like it is. I don't think it is. Uh, huh? No, it's no, good. I don't. I don't think it is. Um, no, that's not an Andre line. It doesn't rhyme well enough. <laughs> well, but, it's just uh, off the cuff, but it's good. Yeah, yeah, it was very good. But um, let's. Uh, do you want to play the last few seconds of that Feinstein clip here, so people know what we're talking sure, about? Sure, go ahead. I'm going to go here peepee kitty. Okay. Determination that if somebody was going to try to up, take me out, I was going to take them with me. Now, having said all of that. That was a period of time ago, and I've watched for these 20 years as terrorism has increased, both on the far extremist left and the far extremist right in this country. Maybe I should have played the whole thing there. But uh, basically she's saying that uh, she had defended herself at one point because people were trying to attack her with guns with bombs and she had uh gotten her own permit and carried and learned how to carry a gun uh, but she says that that is now not her strategy anymore and she doesn't think that that's appropriate because of the increase in terrorism because of an increase in people being violent um to me the logic just doesn't follow at all there it yeah. seems like a complete non sequitur you would think if violence and terrorism is increasing the world the desire for defense should also increase with that instead of decreasing. Like, let's let's defend ourselves less because there's more terrorism. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't understand where, where her line of thinking comes in. I guess I do because she's a She's liar. protected 24-7 by probably Marines, you know, definitely by government-provided <laughs> armed guards. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, just look at Obama's... What, what do they call it? The motorcade? His bulletproof Yeah, there's a, there's a really and- funny picture of him... It's a photo of him and Michelle at some parade or something walking. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah, I've seen that. And somebody put a thought bubble above him that said, like, no one should have a gun. And then there's arrows pointing to, like, inside the jacket of the eight guards around him that says gun, 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 gun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, and, you know, it seems like there's this, um, there's this false premise that the statists have or gun controllers have that uh, – 
that you could somehow get rid of guns in the world. Like you could all of a sudden have a, a utopia where guns didn't exist and there was no such thing as bullets or smokeless powder um, or, or anything like that. And that is so utopian and faith-based and fantastical. I don't understand how anybody who calls themselves intelligent could hold that thought in their head and you know, not though, immediately have it burn a hole through their brain. The smart money is uh, saying nothing's going to change. And is that not, is that like on in trade or something? Nah, that's my term, smart money. But um, <laughs> okay, you know, we there was that reason article last week that made a really good case for there will be massive noncompliance, which I came up mm. with in my own head and talked about on Christmas, you know, the yeah. Christmas cast with your mom, yeah. your mom with your mama. But uh, you know, there was a couple days later, a or a day later, I think on Christmas, a reason article came out basically talking about um massive non-compliance historically like recent historically the highest the estimated highest compliance anywhere was um 20 percent turning in guns you know during mm. the grace period and that was in chicago when they banned uh handguns a bunch mm. of years ago and that's chicago okay and yeah. with assault type weapons as they call them in california it was 10 percent mm. <laughs> <laughs> and they're they're saying that uh, you know during during the uh, and basically they're saying that in America and in Europe, Western and Eastern Europe, it's way below ten percent. <laughs> like when they've outlawed a certain type of guns or all guns in certain parts of Europe, it's way below that. Now Australia might be a different deal, but England is not. In England, they basically said less than ten percent of people turned in their guns. Hmm. So England is less compliant than Chicago, uh, which is saying a lot. Wow. So, and basically they're saying like, and everybody, you know, they didn't have the internet back then and they didn't have everyone, they didn't have as much gun culture as they do now. Right. So basically right. like everyone knows now that when you turn in your guns, it's going to be the end of the, of you. So no right. one's going to do it. It's going to be like right. one or 2% nationwide. So, so does that mean that, that, 90% of previous gun owners in England still have their guns and are just keeping it quiet about it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. I mean, there are an estimated 300,000 unlicensed machine guns owned by people who aren't gangsters in America. Like people mm -hmm. who, you know, their grandpa brought one home for World War right. II and they didn't turn them in. Huh. I mean, and that's just well, machine guns, which are far more rare in America than semi -autos. Well, how, how does that jive? Does that poke holes in the argument people make that, well, when you ban guns, then gun crime goes up, and they point to places like England where where violent crimes have increased since the gun ban? Uh, yeah, probably because criminals are stupid and don't realize it. And because, <laughs> you know, the police publicize, oh, we had mm -hmm. 300 guns taken off the street in this gun drive. But mm -hmm. England's gun laws are so effed up right now. There was a guy who, a couple years ago, that found an old rusted non-functional sawed off shotgun in his garden ah. when he was digging that like mm. you know before he even owned the building like some criminal fleeing from a crime had tossed over the fence and had gotten buried you know and mm. he did what a good english citizen subject is supposed to do he went to the local constabulary with it wrapped in a blanket in his car hood trunk boot boot they call trunk a boot you know went into the police station said Please come out and seize this weapon. I have it safely stored in my boot of my auto. <laughs> and um, they came out, looked at it, and arrested him. And he went to wow. prison. Yep. He went to, no, went to jail for a couple of years yeah. for possession yeah. of a non-functional gun that wasn't his, wow. that was trash in his yard, that he did the supposed right thing and reported to the constabulary. Mm. Wow. wow. F that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and now there's that story floating around that um, I guess uh, some doctor or medical organization in England, which means they are de facto government employees, right? Because there's national health care in England, um, are floating a petition to ban sharp kitchen knives uh, and long. I thought they knives. did that years ago, but someone sent us that today. Yeah, yeah. I thought no, they'd I done that. I think they had banned some type of knife, but not oh, necessarily like kitchen buck knife. knives and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And which you know, really like. Be, a kitchen knife is kind of this, you know, they they banned the scary black rifles of knives, you know, the the, the hunting knives. And now they're right. going after the equivalent 
the uh, grandpa's guns. The grandpa's the, guns of right, knives. Right, the, the deer rifle with the scope and the three hundred eight. And remember, I joked to DJ about that a couple of years ago, and she, I was like, you know, how do people cut their steak? And she said, they send someone from the National Health over to your house to cut your steak up <laughs> and chew it meat. for you, chew it for you, <laughs> and then put it, you know, drip it into your mouth like a mama right. bird. Right, right, right. Well, well, the reason that these this medical group or or these doctors or whoever signed the petition and wrote the petition uh, stated was that there's so many um, stab holes uh, and there's a bunch of young kids going around and when they get in fights they stab each other and they stab their victims um, and if we made all knives less than three inches long with <clears throat> dull blades then uh, you might still have <laughs> violence but at least it wouldn't be lethal and kill people <laughs> less but, than three inches long if you take out the dull blades part that would definitely include um a surgeon's scalpel people should just carry those the thing is i mean uh, where they, they don't get the principle of it it's all them fighting all these little particulars but they're not addressing the root cause you can't have civilization you can't have civilization without kitchen knives <laughs> and you also really can't have commerce without box cutters. You know, try outlawing right. box cutters. I mean, everything comes in boxes. People yeah, in warehouses yeah. use them. So f those people. Well, God, I mean, they're I mean, stupid. What, what, they can't. They, are they trying to create a a demolition man society? And I don't think they can. There's always going to be something you can cars man. outlaw you glass can always, because people can smash a window and pick up a shard of glass. Yeah, one of the one of the easiest ways to kill a bunch of people is to drive a car into a crowd of people. Yeah, how are yeah. you can outlaw people's ability to do that i guess you're going to put barriers around all right, groups right. of people or just forbid public gatherings well which that's they'd the, like to do that's the argument that eric peters makes in a recent article is is it's about the principle of things and once you and we've already given them the principle like there's no principled argument that status can make against banning anything and everything because For they've man. already been yeah. because because they've already banned some things. Well, yeah, it's like that that politician saying, well, this doesn't violate posse comitatus because we're already using the military in the drug war. Right. No, that violates posse comitatus, <laughs> but you got away with it, is right. what you're, you're saying. Just, you're just violating it more. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. You, you, already, you already popped the cherry and you're still raping. F all this. Um, there's an article out there, a newspaper publishes gun owners' names and addresses, but it's been talked to death. And, you know, mm. the funny comment that keeps coming up is uh, somebody should publish the names and addresses of all of the reporters at that paper. Reporters. And, yeah, yeah. Well, I was um, just thinking, what's going to happen? Like, the, these these ridiculous gun controllers are going to go knock on gun owners' doors and be like, excuse me, sir, I do not appreciate you having a gun. Please dispose of it now. Well, really... <laughs> Could you imagine that happening? An unintended consequence of it would be, you know, criminals print it out and target every other house in the neighborhood. <laughs> right, right. Really. Know, which probably includes most... Which probably includes most of the editor, you know, reporters at that paper, yeah. but probably not the yeah. owner of the paper. The owner ah. probably has a gun and got himself taken off the list before it's published. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, um, well, we should break soon. Yeah. Um, and and do glossary. I had one more uh, thing I wanted to get to. Um, it does involve Facebook. Um, What's that? But, uh, What's well, Facebook? Okay, fine. It involves a social networking site that I'm on. Um, one of my social idols. networking. Okay. Fine, I'll just put it this way. One of my idols, uh, Bun B, one half of UGK, the other half, of course, Pimp C, rest in peace. Um, but they ha Bun B has an album called Trill, and Trill has always sort of been their word. It's kind of like, you know, really real, like, you know, I'm hardcore, I'm true, that kind of thing. Um, he wrote this, um, and I've responded to him a few times, and other people have been taking him to task for it. But he wrote, uh, I guess everybody's putting trill on everything like nobody has a trademark on it. When you get that letter in the mail, don't act surprised. Huh. Ba basically threatening other rappers with a lawyer letter. <laughs> and, oh, um, man. Yeah, yeah. And so uh, me and other people got into it with him and saying, hey, this is kind of ridiculous. And then he goes um, – he goes, I know some cats show love and respect, but using the term for money and not breaking bread with pimp family ain't keeping it true at all. Uh, I said, uh, you know, you're right, Bun, but getting the law involved ain't true either, right? I mean, that, that's snitching, isn't it? I mean, that, yeah. that's another form of snitching. It's snitching and, you, you know, does that guy use samples? Does he pay for all of them? And even if he does, you know. I'd say he owes like Eric B and, you know, the fat boys a royalty because he's doing some form of rap. 
<laughs> they invented it, man. He 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 owes Grandmaster Flash some money. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, the lost poets, the last poets. Yeah, yeah. Well, kill my landlord. C I L. Oh, that's Eddie Murphy. <laughs> Sorry. That's Eddie I, I Murphy just, doing the last poets. Okay, okay. Well, I, I hope he gets it eventually. And um, I mean, there is something to be said for being the the progenitor of of a word and saying, "Hey, you know, respect us, please." Um, but don't call the law. Don't call the cops. Don't send a lawyer letter and have and have government goons come out and enforce your will. Bun B is po- more popular than anybody who's stolen the word and is using it now. Just let people know. Rap about it. Diss he probably them got it in a song. Some, You're a freaking got, rapper. He probably Diss got them. it from some breezy strawberry he was he was blowing for crack. He was blowing <laughs> him for crack. Right, right. Well, who knows? He can send me a lawyer man. letter for that. Because I'm kidding. <laughs> I don't think I don't even know who he is, man. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like you said. That's you know, racist. If so- somebody does that shit, we make fun of them. You know, we're probably more popular than them anyway. So call them out and use use your clout as you a know, rapper. Even as beyond Bun that, B. even beyond that, it's incredibly square. I mean, really, you should let history say you came up with this. You know, yeah, I mean, right. really, and it's it's got to be on record. You know, if he has the first vinyl or CD or MP3 or eight track tape out where it was used, history yeah. proves it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, and I do that sometimes too. I say, "Well, I invented this term, blah 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 blah." But I kind of just say it to get it on record. Of by the way, I'm not being recognized. But then I'm not going to go after someone else who uses it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And a lot and of also, the reason that I talk about I did this, I did this, I did this is because we're a teaching hospital. I, I want to show how to do what we do. Right. Well, also, I think that um, you should want people to imitate you, right? I mean. In his next comment, he's like, you know, people have been stealing the Southern slang since before I started rapping. And it's like, yeah, so let them. I mean, th- that's how you get your ideas and your style out into the world is you have people imitate you and use it. And and it's it's a, a form of flattery, right? I know. It's really pussy to say, like, I came up with something cool that's so cool that other people thought it was cool enough to do. Yeah. Yeah, I know. What are what are you a hipster? I mean, it's only cool if other people if it's not popular. No. <laughs> it's freaking ridiculous. I want people to say the same things we say. I want people to tell their family about uh, squares and statists and yeah. non-aggression principle. That that's which what is why we're gonna is. which is why we're gonna read the glossary afterwards. You know, we are. I remember. Ugh, I'm so sick of looking at Steve's wedding pics, and I'm all out of passive aggressive comments. What else am I supposed to do at work all day? Sick of stalking your ex on Facebook? Yeah. Are you all out of cute? Cats and autocorrect mishaps to lol at? Duh! Freedom Fiends to the rescue! The Fiends now have a blog. Read all about the latest tyranny today. Dream about lip pair. Laugh while Western civilization collapses. Just click on the cat icon to the right of freedomfiends.com. Freedom Fiends blog. Read it! This is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends. I've been on the World Wide Web since its inception in 1994. I've tried dozens of web providers in that time. The only one that hasn't broken my heart is HostGator. HostGator has unlimited server space, unlimited throughput, and a guaranteed uptime of better than 99.9% for only $150 a year. You can pay a little less elsewhere, but you'll pull out your hair dealing with anyone else. HostGator has great service and unlimited tech support only a phone call away 24-7, 365. HostGator is where pros like the Fiends host because we know how to do it right. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the HostGator affiliate link on the right sidebar to sign up today. Love the Fiends and want to help out? We do take donations and we put them back into our Liberty Projects. You can make a donation by clicking on the spinning coin on any post. But what if you want to help but you ain't got no cash? Or you made a donation and you want to help more? Here's how you can help. Download and seed our torrents to help keep us drone-proof. There's a Torrent Club link at the top of FreedomFiends.com. You can also blog the Fiends and share episode links on Facebook, Twitter, and elsewhere. You can rate and review our movies on Amazon. Amazon and IMDb, you can rate and review the Freedom Fiends and Anarchy Gumbo and our songs on iTunes. That really helps a lot. You can buy our movies and share them with friends or give them out as gifts. And one of the best ways to spread liberty is to buy a bunch of Freedom Fiends buttons and give them out as gifts. Wholesale prices are available and you can also comment on our site or better yet, 
comment about us on other sites. And please email the site link to all your friends. Thanks for helping spread The Fiend's message worldwide to as many Liberty people as you can, especially to those who don't yet get it. You rock. I remember a long time ago basically saying that I could die happy someday if I came up with a really funny joke, it spread worldwide to everyone where everyone knew it, and I never got credit for it. <laughs> that was one of my stated goals about 20 years ago. And, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, in a way, we've by far beyond done that. And we do have yeah. buttons, a very limited number, that go. say state speech is hate speech. Hate and um, speech. <clears throat> I'm going to work out some kind of thing with a blog post of like, yeah. you know, the next six people that order a back pack of four fiends buttons for six bucks also get one of these free. Because yeah. I've only got yeah. like 12 of them. And I probably need to send you a couple and Frank a couple. Well, so. sp speaking of which, uh, Knight, my little brother, who listeners probably have heard on the last cast <laughs> um, he when I was there visiting uh, anything that's lame he calls statist right he doesn't call it square like <sighs> mom tells him to go brush his teeth he's like mom that's so statist that's awesome <laughs> I really, I, you know, that'd be great if that caught on. And well, if there's anybody well, that could get it to happen, it's your 12 year old brother. <laughs> well, I was kind of upset with it at first. I was like, that's not proper use of it. And we're going to ruin the term. But I'm like, no, nah, he's a kid, man. If kids associate statism with lame, yeah. that's a good thing, right? That's a good thing. It's like, it's yeah. better than saying gay. Because gay yeah. is, is neither positive or negative. It's just a right. thing. You know, it's, it's like, and it's, it's like voluntary. Having, it's like having you know? red hair or brown hair. Yeah. Um, yeah. Although redheads have no souls, or at least light skinned ones with freckles. Gingers. That's yeah, gingers. gingers. They have to have red hair. Yeah. So, <laughs> but, you know, gay is, is a neutral thing, but status is a bad thing. So if people say status for square, that's really good. That's really good. Yeah. 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 I don't want to brush my teeth. I don't want to clean my room. That's really statist. Yeah. Statist. I like it. Oh, and speaking of Knight, Knight is actually named after my, uh, my mom's mom, my grandma. And um, I listen to what I would call a podcast to one. Um, my my mom's mom <laughs> and her husband, instead of sending letters back and forth between them and my mom once she moved away, they decided they would get a microphone and record it on a cassette tape and send her the cassette tape. And um, it was about 27 minutes long, and it sounds kind of like a, a podcast, but directed at one person. That's awesome. I actually recorded the whole thing in MP3 format. Uh, my mom's mom's voice is great. She sounds like Her Dolly name Parton. is Knight? Her name was Knight, yeah. yeah. K-N-I-G-H-T? Um, that yes. seems like a man's name. Well, well, it was her name, and uh, I thought it was inspired by by Prince. I thought your mom uh, liked Prince, so she named her kid. No, right? I doubt that. <laughs> but you uh, know, I just thought of something. I actually used to do that podcast to one thing. Um, I used to make cassette tape letters, occasionally to my mother, and probably once to my dad when I was at boarding school, but all the time to girls I had a crush on. You know, this girl uh, uh, Denise De La Cerda, I've mentioned her before. We're still friends. She lives in South America now, and she's a tattoo artist. She did the the flaming heart that's on my right arm that has a banner on it with my wife's name, Deborah, in it. Ah, she okay. she gave it to me like 15 years ago, and I had her leave the banner blank. And I said, you know, when I find the right girl, I'm going to put her name in here. And, you know, I used to do things like I'd date a girl for a while, and as a joke on the third, third time I screwed her or something, you know, I'd write her name in there with a pen. Mm -hmm. But... uh you know, it was literally blank until about a year after I was married to my wife. I was like, well, I'm sure now I can go get this tattooed. <laughs> but uh, I used to do that with Denise all the time. She probably still has some. Maybe. I don't know. She's moved to South America. Okay. I doubt she brought all her crap with her. But, um, you know, I used to, when I was at church farm school, I used to make tapes for her. And I'd, I'd play guitar nice. on them. I'd sing on them. I'd talk Aww. to her. You know, it was Aww. like a podcast to one. I guess that's where it started. I never thought about that. Yeah, that's, you yeah. know, the first time I podcasted was with my wife and it was in 2006. And the first episode of Submission and Coffee that we did was the first podcast I ever did. And it was, a, and I was like, you know, I read about it. I was excited about it. I read how to do an RSS feed and I like figured it all out. We didn't even have WordPress. Like I made a web page to do it and had to update the web page and download <laughs> it and re upload uh -huh. it every time. But I had an wow. RSS feed and it had an MP3 file. And it actually got really popular. Um, but the first episode we did was about five minutes long. And it was just like, hey, DJ, come here and sit in front of the, and like the, the audio quality wasn't great. Um, but it was like the first time I sat down and did that, it was like we we're sitting at our dining room table. And I had this feeling of like, we're speaking to the world. And I have wanted to do this my whole life. You know, like when I was a kid, mm -hmm. I was interested in like shortwave radio. And like, yeah, I've talked about. Well, I've talked about the FM transmitter I made, but I was really interested in shortwave because it like reaches the world literally, or mm -hmm. it can reach 
to to all corners of the world, not necessarily many people in it, but uh, right, right. You know, and it always kind of interested me. And I, but I remember the first time we did a podcast, there was something very familiar about it, and I didn't associate it with making those cassette tapes for family and mm-hmm, lovers mm-hmm. back when I was fifteen. Yeah. You know, sixteen. Yeah. Well, that, that's totally what I thought of because I, I recorded it all and made it an MP3 for posterity, you know, so it'll exist awesome. forever. And um, maybe I'll uh, I'll ask my mom if she's cool with it and we can take a little chunk out and play it one day for a few minutes and let people get a sense of that. Cool. Um, Want to make you know, sure we respect well, the, the, the deceased yeah, the before I do that. Yeah. yeah. Respect the what? The deceased. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the family as the family. Yeah. But, you know, my yeah. – um, every time – the last few times that we've gotten together, my siblings and my dad and I, uh, which I haven't done in about six years, you know, and he finally came and saw me and it was well overdue. But uh, when we got together for his like 84th birthday and then again for his like 89th birthday or something or 87th birthday, um, my sisters brought cassette recorders. And the last time I brought a mini DV camera and like they sat my dad down and like, got him to tell his stories and there were stories I'd heard a million times and they were like, this is important. We must do this for posterity. And then they like, they made me make like, you know, DVD copies of it and send it out to everyone for Christmas. Like they harangued me into doing it. It wasn't nice. And it wasn't really that cool because it was really contrived, but I'm really glad we did that podcast with my dad because it was totally yeah. not contrived and he totally opened up and it wasn't square and he said what was really on his mind and it reached thousands of people. Whereas like, yeah. you know, these things that we did with the family were for the family, which is nice, but I didn't enjoy doing it. It was kind of like, you know, my sister's going like, well, dad, tell the story of how you met mother. And my sister, one of them talks like that. And it's like talking to a <laughs> child and it's really annoying. And, uh, you know, that's not what we did. We were like, so Jack, what part of the government do you think is useful and why? You know, we kind of like pushed him and like we yeah. talked to him like we'd talk to a friend or an interviewee that we, we consider a peer, mm-hmm. you know, instead mm-hmm. of. This is gentle and perfect, and we've heard it all before, but it must be made for posterity. You know, like yes, you're yes. like you're working for NPR or the National right. Archives. Right, we, we were or the something. fiends, and they were the NPR. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. they're square, and we're not. But <laughs> but you know, it served. It made him happy, and it made them happy. It just, I I yeah. think he got a bigger kick out of being on the fiends too. You know. Yeah. 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 Probably. At least I would if I were him. So let's play a song and then come back and read glossary for posterity and comment right. on it. All right. Sounds good. How about, uh, let's see what we got here. Um, played all of your songs before. What about God is a Woman? Have we played that yet? Yeah, we played that. I got some stuff if you don't, but I'd have to hook it up. But if you got anything, you could play it again. Well, is it, is it available on YouTube? I could just do that. Oh, Go to YouTube and search Right Arm of Wyoming. Play one of those songs. Or Bomb. Uh, let's see. Bomb Hits of Acid. Let's see. Bomb. Uh, excuse me. Bomb Pain Glorious. Love Sucker ha- by Bomb. Love first, Sucker. Love okay. Sucker we'll, by Bomb. We'll do Love Sucker. That's a good I, one. We've already played Pain Glorious, I think. Yeah. Love Sucker. Love okay. Sucker. Yeah. The, mm-hmm. Tony Fagg wrote the lyrics, most of them, to this. Uh, it's about his ex wife. He called her Love Sucker. <laughs> Although she and I are still friends, and I don't talk to him, so what's that? Say? I didn't. I didn't see it come up. Um, I can send you a link. Okay, send me a link. Trolla. Red Hot Chili Peppers do one that's Anarchy in the UK slash No Chump Love Sucker. Screw those guys. I just sent you a link. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. It looks like link. it's a. It's a. It's. It's actually a. Um, a list. It's going to play all the songs, but you can stop it after Love oh, Sucker. Okay. Ah, great pick too. Um, yeah. Should, that's the picture that's in Demolition Man. And yeah, it's, uh, put, this in, it's, put, this in, put it in the chat room okay. for our, our loyal fans. And it's this me, is, me in a slip. It's me, a young it's Michael. Me, it's it's a young Michael with uh with a mullet with a. It's you trying to beat Kurt ch- Cobain at the Reading Festival. Yeah, but it's me before <laughs> Kurt, Kurt Kurt Cobain was following me. If anything, man, I yeah. I was doing this before he ever did it in public. So nice, nice, and they were fans of yours. So maybe. Yep. Apparently now I found out all three of them were fans. You know, I've seen Dave oh. Grohl up front at bomb shows and I've seen uh, the bass player Chris Novoselic once at a bomb show and then he wrote a great article about us but somebody recently told me he and Kurt Cobain used to listen to the yeah. first bomb cassette so yeah yeah yep. that's awesome 
Yeah. So jealous. So jealous. All right. Well, here's uh, Love Sucker. Look in the Bomb. picture. Look in the picture. Okay. Jay Crawford on the right is wearing like a Sergeant Pepper's military outfit. It's not the one my mother made. It's pretty awesome, though. Right behind him is Doug Hillsinger, the gay guy, looking really like, hey, baby, I want to fuck you over the pool table. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then, and I'm looking all like fluffy and heroined out. I was dope sick yeah. in that picture, but I look pretty yeah. hot. And then I look hot and vacant. Like, I'm not using my body. You can play with it if you want to, <laughs> uh, which is a line from Big Black Song. And then behind me, Tony Fagg looks like he's going to murder the camera, doesn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Is he wearing a backwards hat? He looks yeah. like some kind of. <laughs> yeah. But he was doing that before it was synonymous with uh, what it is now. And he okay. basically did it because it got in his way playing drums if it was in the front, but he wore it to keep the sweat yeah. out of his eyes. So it had utilitarian uh, purpose. It wasn't a okay. hipster thing. Okay. Okay. Cool. Well, here's a uh, love sucker. While uh, we go take a little break. Here you go. Yeah.
Coast. Back on Freedom Fiends <clears throat> Live. How you doing, Michael? Good. That uh, long EP, Love Sucker, was recorded when we had our reunion in 1999. And it was... Uh, you know, it was a bunch of songs we had in the can and like worked out right before that show. Nice. And it was recorded and mixed in 24 hours straight with no break at Coast Recorders in San Jeez. Francisco. Jeez. 24 uh, hours. Are you kidding me? That sounded great. Engineered by Jason from 9353, who uh, also engineered like Third Eye Blind and REM and a whole bunch of other stuff. Mm. Uh, wow. You know, there's a yeah. movie I saw, two movies I want to recommend before we get into glossary. One okay. is um, Chaplin. I've never seen it. It's fucking amazing. And Robert Downey Jr. got cheated by, by not winning an Oscar that year. He is amazing in Chaplin. You ever seen it? Mm -mm, no. Is it about a uh, U.S. Charlie, military Chaplin? No, it's about Charlie Chaplin. Ah, okay. okay. Who was uh, actually like driven out of the United States by Joe McCarthy and the head of the FBI. What was the guy's name? The dress-wearing guy? Uh, C. Everett. No, not C. Everett. Coop. Um, oh man, I forgot now. Yeah. Uh, J. Edgar Hoover. Yeah. They Edgar basically Hoover. like yeah. Chaplin was uh British, but he came to America early on in films, um, started the first film studio, United Artists and, uh, was driven out of the country for, you know, not, not being willing to say I am not a communist, even though he wasn't. And, um, mm -hmm. but they did not put him before Congress because they were afraid that he would make fun of them and succeed because he was really good at, at poking fun of people. He's witty. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. But, uh, yeah. And we actually watched it on Christmas day, which we didn't know till the end. And the, where are they now text on the screen was 35 years to the day from the day Chaplin died. He died on Christmas day, surrounded by loved huh. ones at an, at, huh. you know, at an old age. It was good. Good way yeah. to die. Yeah. Yeah, totally. But uh, Chaplin did not like authority. Most of his movies were him running from cops, like his, you know, Keystone <laughs> Cop stuff, you uh -huh. know, like him outsmarting cops. There's one he actually, actually what got him in trouble was there's one like about Ellis Island of people coming to Ellis Island, which he did. Uh, and it's like what his character, the tramp, like kicks a custom agent in the butt and throws him into the river, into the water. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what got him into, in trouble the most. But he also oh. made a movie called the great dictator where he played Hitler. Cause he had the mustache already. It was his, you know, he had the same mustache as Hitler. Right, right. Charlie Hi Hitler did. stole his mustache. Right. Yeah. And, um, but he made this movie called the great dictator. I've only seen scenes from it. I haven't seen the whole thing, but um, there's a great scene in it where he's like, he's Hitler and he's lying on his back playing with a beach ball, like kicking it up in the air and bouncing it on his feet. But the beach ball is the earth, you know? Ah. Um, but basically, yeah. He uses Hitler in it. It was during Hitler's reign. He uses Hitler in it as a parody or as shorthand for like all politicians, which is what Hoover noticed and didn't uh, like. He's like, he's not talking about Hitler. He's talking about America, you know, right, but he was right. really he's, talking, he's about, talking about the state. He was talking about America. He was talking about, you know, whoever was running England. What's the guy's name? Right. The guy who divided Churchill. up the map, <laughs> who divided Churchill. up, who yeah. created Pal who created Israel on his lunch hour. On his, yeah, well, on his, who before drew up tea. the Middle East before T or started it before T and finished it after T or something. Yeah. <laughs> the other good movie I want to recommend is called The Wrecking Crew. This movie was frigging mind blowing to me. Okay, I went and saw this really crappy movie called Daydream Believers, which is a biopic created by VH1 Films about the monkeys. Ah, okay. Um, you know about how they their whole story, which included that they didn't play their instruments and they just sang on their records. Mm -hmm. The people that played their instruments were the Wrecking Crew. And I knew of the Wrecking Crew. The Wrecking Crew were this loose association of 10 or 15 studio musicians in L.A. In, from the late 50s to the early 70s. Um, and they were called the Wrecking Crew because the older, like, classically trained and jazz trained studio musicians said, these young guys are going to wreck music. You know, and they were taking work away from the old guys. So they were nice. like, they're the Wrecking Crew. And they liked the name and they took it. Hell yeah. Um, but the Wrecking Crew, I didn't know this, man. The Wrecking Crew played on like 95% of the records that were on the radio wow. during that period. I mean, they were the backing thing on like, 
you know, a bunch of silly bands like the Monkees and the Partridge Family, but they all, and the Carpenters, the Carpenters are a real band, you know, the Carpenters, Captain and Tennille, the Beach Boys, you know, in the studio, like the Beach Boys, like Brian Wilson, the songwriter, kicked his band out of the studio and brought the Wrecking Crew in. Nice. I mean, nice. they played on like every friggin' hit on the radio when I was a kid. Yeah. I didn't know that, man. It yeah. blew my mind. Yeah, according to Wiki, won. Nancy Sinatra, the Mamas and the Papas, John okay, Denver. Read the whole list. Read the whole list. Yeah. All right. Um, from the Monkees to Bing Crosby, and this isn't even all of it. This is just included. Nancy Sinatra, yeah. Bobby V, the Partridge Family, the Mamas everything and the Papas, Phil Spector Carpenters. did. Everything Phil Spector did for Motown, which yeah. is interesting because before I've mentioned this documentary called Standing in the Shadows of Motown, which is about the Motown session musicians in Detroit and like how they played on every Motown hit until they went to work one day and there was a sign on the door that says, uh, we've moved to Los Angeles. And it didn't even say like, thank you for your service. It was like, you know, later, you know, like the coal mine closing basically. And, hmm. but, but, and that's a really sad movie, but this movie is really happy because they all made tons of money. These were the people that picked up the slack when Motown moved to LA. Nice. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Even, um, the acclaimed album pet sounds, which we talked about last time or a couple times ago, right? This lamp was um, used on Pet Sounds. This yeah, is the lamp yeah. from Pet Sounds. Yeah, yeah. and the, the Wrecking Crew was doing that, too. Um, they were also called The Click. Yeah, um, which, which is, is kind of a hip-hop name. By, yeah. by Kanye West's um, <laughs> people. So, hmm. Yeah, Leonard Cohen. I remember an interview with Leonard Cohen because uh, he did an album with Phil Spector and Death of a Ladies' Man, and the Wrecking Crew were the backing band on it. Um, Phil Spector actually pulled a gun on... On, I think it was John Lennon during the sessions for uh, the last album. And there's actually a Beatles record. It's called Let It Be Naked. It's the record Let It Be without all the Phil Spector production and orchestral tracks and, and other crap in the background. Mm -hmm. Now, the Beatles played all their own instruments. They didn't use the Wrecking Crew. They were better than the Wrecking Crew. But uh, they used a lot of orchestration on some Beatles records. And the last record, Let It Be, it was Phil Spector's fault. But there's a Let It Be Naked which is much better, which is let it be remixed without any of Phil Spector's fingerprints on it. So, um, hmm. yeah, Glenn Campbell was, you know, some of them went on to like their own stardom and then used the wrecking crew on their records and actually credited them, which usually didn't happen. But hmm. Glenn Campbell, uh, Carol Kay, the bass player in the wrecking crew, the main bass player was a woman, which is kind of cool back then. Uh, Leon Russell, Dr. John, they remember us. But yeah, it was really mind blowing how much they played. The Fifth Dimension, Simon and Garfunkel, Nancy Sinatra, The Partridge Family, um, the, the song "Good Vibrations" by the, you know, I'm giving a big that Beach Boys song. That's the Wrecking mm -hmm. Crew and Brian ah, Wilson basically. Right, it's not right. the Beach Boys. Well, okay. the Beach Boys sing on it, but yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was pretty mind blowing to me. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> All right. I was wondering if uh, Arlen Specter was related to Phil Specter, but uh, I don't know because Arlen Specter <laughs> does have some connection in the music industry, doesn't he? Doesn't he own? He's he's a fan of music, and he also um, he owned a publishing company or something, didn't he? And, and he he helped getting he helped get the the producer of the Fuji's album pardoned, uh, right? Because the producer cocaine. of the Fuji's album had uh, like a pound of liquid cocaine on him or some ungodly amount. Yeah. And, uh, Phil, Sp uh, Ar yeah, Arlen Specter helped get him pardoned, and I was that just blew my mind. But apparently, he was a yeah. big into music. Um, oh, other it looks like HuffPo actually wrote uh, an amazing coincidences between Phil Specter and Arlen Specter. Oh, Sonny says, and Cher was backed by the uh, the Wrecking Crew, the Turtles, Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, the Birds, the Carpenters, the Fifth Dimension. This is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. That's that's the Wrecking Crew back in it. Mm -hmm. Herb Alpert and the Tijuana Brass, the one that always liked to put naked ladies on the cover. Nancy Sinatra, Mamas and Papas. It just Simon and Garfunkel. It just goes on and on and on yep, and on. Yep, yep, yeah. But apparently, there's no no relation between Phil Spector and Arlen Spector. But <laughs> oh, they, there are they, some there are some funny jokes according to HuffPo. Like um, like Arlen Spector was always in with the gun lobby. Phil Spector was always in the lobby with a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and uh, and etc. Like Arlen Specter was on a subcommittee on crime and drugs. Phil Specter was a subcommittee on crime and drugs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So only Huff Po jokes, but um, that's pretty funny. 
But we digress. We should move on to our glossary where we're originally yeah. funny. Yeah. 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 Do you want to start it off? No, you start. Are we well, ready? there's something we added. We we stopped at um, Dad's band, but we have to go back because I added Blood Dance. Read Blood Dance. Ah, Blood Dance. Yes. Okay. Blood it's Dance. Timely. Or doing the Blood Dance. It is Mike Vander. How do you Vander Baugh? Vander Baugh. I guess Bow. Okay. The guy that does Mike. the three percenters, Sipsy Street Irregulars blog. Uh, who. He's known for two things. One is telling people to throw bricks through the window of the Democrats' office. Uh, <laughs> and the other is uh, he and David Kadria broke the story nationally of the uh, of the Gunwalker scandal, Gunrunner, you know, of the uh, feds uh, giving the fa- guns. Fast and Furious. Yeah, Fast and Furious. Yeah, yeah the, right. the feds giving guns to the feds who want to take away giving our quote guns. quote, unquote, <laughs> assault rifles to the Mexican fe- cartels. The feds who want to take away our assault rifles so they can give them to Mexican cartels. <laughs> Pretty much. So uh, anyway, the blood dance is Mike Vanderbau's term for the shameful display of faux heartfelt BS that the mainstream media partake in whenever there's a mass killing. It includes sticking a camera in the face of grieving relatives to get a soundbite, trotting out photos of dead children, interviewing people who met the killer once 10 years ago, interviewing uh. crying politicians who also murdered children, calling for gun control that will not stop madmen and will only harm honest people, getting facts wrong in the rush to have the scoop, and generally being ass clowns to increase ratings. That's a yeah. good one. That's a good one. Yeah. I wrote most of these. I mean, we came up with the terms, but I wrote most of the definitions, so I'm going to let you read most of the definitions. I'm going to sit back and go, <laughs> yeah, I'm Divis- cool. Division of labor. Yeah. All right, and you're, you're going to be the beavis to my butthead. So All right. dad spam was the last one. So dinosaur yes. chewing its tail is the next dinosaur one. Dinosaur chewing its tail. That's an analogy that Michael came up with to describe the utter inefficiency of all governments. It's based on something he read as a kid about how dinosaurs had such small brain weight to body weight ratios. They were so stupid that they could be chewing on their tail and not know it. I think I need to correct a typo there, which is good. We're reading this out loud. Loud. Yes. Weight yes. to weight to weight ratio. I'll fix it. All right. All right. So go on. So um, next, of course, is DJ, and that is uh, Michael's wife. Unless we're talking about the DJ. Oh, 9, no, that 000. works. Brain weight to body weight ratio. That works. Small yeah. brain weight to body weight ratio. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. it's such um, disparate, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Disparate. Disparate. All right. Disparate. Um, yes. So. DJ is, of course, Michael's wife. Uh, the next on the list is Everhawk, a uh, politician who <laughs> you came always up with wants That's to be yours. more. That's yeah, yours. That's yeah. awesome. Nima came up with this on the spot during a live show. Uh, moving right along. Fed goons. Um, don't know who came up with that, but we've been saying it for a while. Oh, uh, uh, that's, that's in. I know it, it was used as early as Boston's books. It's Boston, used in. Okay. It's, it's yeah. probably predates that. It probably came out of the patriot movement of the 90s you know ah. the where they were communicating by fax about their assault weapons and sending pictures to each other of them <laughs> right right okay okay so fed goons are of course any armed federal agent who oppresses people for violating nanny laws also known as fleas or federal <laughs> law enforcement agents we did come up with that or michael did and we're, did you ever we're finish that, that song? song is it is it is that a song i forget that is a song, yeah. Okay. Um, it needs another pass on lyrics, and I need to add some more instrumentation. But other than that, the it's reason done. it's not finished is there's no event like an election or Christmas for me to push you to get the video done by. <laughs> you know, maybe, yeah, maybe, so. maybe they'll be proposing uh, some laws, and we can. I can say you have to get that done by February fourteenth, yes, Valentine's yes. Day, when when the new Fed goon boot on your neck law goes into effect. <laughs> yes, that it's resi- yeah. it's it's criminal felonious resisting of arrest to complain about boots on your neck. <laughs> right. All right. So, um, moving on, we got Freedom Fix. That's a recurring segment. Well, I guess it used to be a recurring segment <laughs> where Michael and Nima talk about something in the news that is good and advances freedom, the opposite of a tyranny today. It's still a recurring segment. We just never use the bump. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. There you go. We, the still say, we still say the hey, bump that's was cool. Fix, but- I didn't really like the bump. It was, it was weird and, uh, it was sex and drugs, which should be cool, but it was just weird. And you made it fine. You did a fine job making it, but it's it just didn't – I don't know. I haven't been using a lot of those bumps, really. I mean, they're in a yeah. folder that is in a – I should move the folder closer to the folders I use. Yeah. I we don't use even really more. use Tyranny today. I guess because we're so 
you're so free form that we don't really want to block anything off into a specific segment. And, and also, um, we've gotten, we get, we have so many ads now that are so well produced. Um, I mean, it was kind of like we used to use those short bumps kind of as filler. And we used to, to use to, a to lot make it more. seem like there was a more mixed media to yeah. help your ear have a break from our voices, right. even though they're very sexy. <laughs> even though but, it's our uh, voices on the breaks, but uh, yes, yeah, maybe I should bring back some of those bumps. You know, I have a folder of um, quotes. It's mostly you and DJ from the movie that I should just put in randomly. But I don't know. Part of it too was like I used to spend a lot more time crafting each episode. Yeah, and now I spend a lot less time, but they're actually better because we've just gotten better at doing everything. Right, right. Now and, it's know, just pretty much live. I mean, what you hear is almost just the live recording. Yeah, and we'll, literally we'll cut things we're out doing if it. we say something that's like, "Well, I don't really want to have said that," or "Or we shouldn't out this person." Then we might go cut yeah. it out. But and you know, part of the reason that we do this, uh, do this live, like we're streaming right now. Um, part of the reason we do it live is because we want to get on radio. We're working slowly toward getting on actual radio. So even if we're not taking calls and we're not, <laughs> I'm not paying attention to the to the chat room very much. I just read it, but it it gets in the way of <laughs> talk back to us, but we won't listen. No, it's just there's so much to do to technically pull this off. Yeah. Um, but we're doing this live and then releasing later as an archive. Like we used to do this live but we we do this the mon the tuesday monday shows live now too sometimes it's basically practice for if we ever get a radio show yep 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 yeah and so um we'll go and on we, to and we like the idea of it being live it make you know we do get feedback we in the first half we mentioned some things that people said we yeah, read it yeah yeah and it gives you it gives you that little ex, it's more exciting right to do it live i have little... the i have the skype computer on but i i never plugged it in but no one's called in on it so and we didn't give out the number so i'm gonna actually turn it off we say we take i i for, i forget that the thursday is supposed to be a call i kind of like so. that we do a calling show but then don't take calls but we generally take about <laughs> one a show but uh yeah. i'm turning it off i'm not taking calls right right we got we got so, an agenda this is for we the do. ages. And, and on that is the rest of our glossary. Uh, next up, freedom of ingestion. That's Nima's phrase for something he believes the founding fathers would have absolutely put in one form or another into the Bill of Rights if they had a crystal ball to see where their republic had ended up today and where it's headed from here. Freedom of ingestion would basically be the right to put anything you like into your body or not put anything you don't want into your body. Freedom of ingestion is also the name of a song Michael, Nima and Michael wrote and recorded for the Guns and Weed movie. Mikola. Mikola and Nemo. Mikola. I am Mikola Jackoff. Yes. Yes. Although, in retrospect, um, I don't know if we should use the term founding fathers because maybe Jefferson Some of them. Yeah, as you, as you were reading that, I was thinking, you know, Hamilton liked that kind of tyranny. Right, right. And and a lot of the, the founding fathers had no intention of there even being a Bill of Rights and were sort of uh, trading the use of the Bill of Rights to the the naysayers as, hey, okay, fine, well, we'll give you this Bill of Rights if we get this big, powerful central government. So, um, I changed it to more nuanced Jefferson nowadays. and Madison. Um, you know, there's I a book. I didn't even know about Madison. I probably would say yes to Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson. Sure about, well, because he, sure uh, he grew he grew hemp. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, how about Benjamin Franklin? He loved to party. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Thomas maybe. Jefferson and Ben Franklin. But then, then again, Jefferson wouldn't have uh, given his slaves the freedom to ingest what they want or not ingest the whip, the lash of a whip on their backs when they didn't uh, want to pick yeah, it up. Yeah, we've done whole episodes on why using Jefferson as an example is uh, of yeah. liberty is bad. He owned people. Yeah. But I do believe he would have put uh, – yeah, yeah. At this point, I don't even want to say like, "Well, the founder Thomas Jefferson." Fuck that. It's you know, fuck yeah. that. I don't need those guys. Fuck that. It's a basic human right. What have anyway. they done for me lately? To... What have they yeah. done for me lately? You know, yeah. when the Supreme Court decides the Second Amendment does not have an individual right after Cass Sunstein gets on there, yeah. what is Thomas Jefferson going to do for me other than have said, you know, <laughs> basically uh, hassle doctrine? But yeah, right. go on. Right. Yeah, yeah. So who need who needs to say the founding it. fathers and freedom of ingestion? It's just something that's a natural human right that Nima and Michael have expressed before. And I was a statist when we started this cast. I was a minarchy yeah. statist patriot. So uh, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of remnants of that that need to be cleaned out of that. Yeah. It's good we're yeah. going through this. So what's next? Spring cleaning. So next, theme. Um, 
Fiend. Fiend. In street speak or little Fiend. kid speak, as in Hello Freedom Fiends, is the first line of one of the songs Nima and Michael wrote for the Guns and Weed movie. That's where the name of the podcast comes from. Uh, there's also a YouTube link there. The Fiends title case means Micah and Nima. Michael Micah. and Nima. What is it? Uh, first time Micah our names wrong. Yes. yes. Me- the Fiends is Nima. Michael and Nima. Mima. And That's DJ. us. Mima. 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 Yeah. I was trying to do a yeah an amalgam. You know, of like, when, names, when, like celebrities. when celebrities marry. Yeah. Yeah. We're Mima. Or Mima. we could be Nikel. I like Mima better because we make memes. Well, that could be the first name and the last name. Uh, Mima Nikel. That's our full name. Mikol so, Davadi. Yeah. yeah. Dividey, because um, we divide people. Now we right. unite people, man. Right. But uh, with a title case, as in capital T-H-E, capital F-E-E-N-S, that means Michael and Nima, and sometimes DJ. The Fiends, lowercase all, means the fans of the Freedom Fiends podcast. Um, so, yeah. And, and then the next definition is The Fiends. Hmm. That can either mean Michael and Nima or fans of the Freedom Fiends. Fans are small Fs. Um, only Michael, Nima, and DJ, the Fiend behind the scene, get capital Fs. It's kind of a restatement of the end of Fiend, but uh, it's all good. And we'll go on to the next one, Fiend Sourcing. That's Nima's word for crowdsourcing by the Freedom Fiends fans. Examples include helping with ideas, making t-shirts, and uploading episodes to YouTube. We thank yes. you all for all of your help, Fiend Sourcing. We couldn't do that. We couldn't do the cast as well as we do without all the good Fiend Sourcers out there. All right. Yes. We'll go on to the next entry is uh, Flying Robots or <laughs> Flying Robots That Kill Brown People. <laughs> There's a two-word definition to this. Um, as Barack Obama would say, I've got two words for you. Predator Drones. Um, yeah. So, Who yeah. came up with that? That's from – is that Scott Horton? I don't know. It's I, just out there. We didn't come up with that, though, but it's yeah, out there. Yeah. We say it a lot, or I used to say it a lot. Go um, on. But yes, that, that, that was the punchline to a Barack Obama joke where he's talking about uh, the Jonas Brothers hitting on his daughters. Uh, he says, I have two words for you guys, predator drones. Ew, As in, so, ha, that's ha, so ha, statist. Watch me kill these little kids with a drone. That's it's, it's statist. Much, it's so much less funny if you know and understand that he actually does kill kids quite often with predator drones. I know. Uh, all right. Um, hmm. Freedom Fiend with small Fs. That's uh, either fans of the Freedom Fiend podcast or it's a word that replaces any of these words. Get up colon, on the mic more. Get up on the mic. Agorists, anarchist, anarcho-kahala, anarcho- Too much, man. Step yeah, off. Step off. Step back, man. Step off. Okay. Man. okay. Replaces any of these words. Agorist, anarchist, anarcho-capitalist, ANCAP, libertarian, small l, not libertarian party member, that's not us, and voluntarist. So those are all synonyms for freedom fiends. You know, I think I put those in there alphabetically without even trying. Oh, good for you. It's not not hard. It's three A's, an L, and a V. Yeah. All right. Uh, (laughs) Golden floppy disk of redemption is the next entry. That is uh, close friends of Nima and Michael and or people who've done free work to help spread the word of the fiends. Michael's recurring joke is the golden floppy disk of redemption is the list of people will spare from the ANCAP re-education camps when Nima and I are the libertarian dictators of the world in a few years. <laughs> Michael also says, you know, we had to one up Adam Kokesh, anarchy president. <laughs> <laughs> Sheesh, that's aiming so low. As for the floppy disk part, Michael started keeping the list about 15 years ago. It's now actually been transferred to the golden encrypted USB thumb drive of redemption, but we kept the old name. <laughs> yeah. Of course, all in jest. Uh, we don't actually want to throw people in re-education camps. But we do have an encrypted list of people we like. Yes. Yeah, that part and is true. Some of them are worm wranglers, which we probably – I'm going <laughs> to add on here while you're reading yes. the next one. Yes, you must. All right. Uh, next is a very important one uh, to new listeners or people trying to decode the fiends in the future, uh, <laughs> digging through the rubble. <laughs> so, the government, when we say the government, here's what we mean. We mean any government. Michael and Nima complain a lot about the American federal government and various state and local laws in America, but if they lived anywhere else, they'd be complaining just as much about government in that place. Uh, you can also see the entry of the state and government, which we will get to. All right. And in that same vein, next up we have 
government guns. Government guns are guns used by the government to initiate aggression and oppress people, either by actually firing the guns to kill or maim, or simply by the threat of guns' potential use. All taxes and nanny laws are backed by government guns. This is as opposed to libertarians' guns, which are only ever drawn or fired in self-defense. Michael and Nima considered calling their music project Government Guns, but finally decided to keep it Nima V and right arm of Wyoming. Of course, so we could maintain our own individual autonomy. All right. And um, Guns and Weed, since we're still on the guns theme. Guns and Weed is Michael and Nima's libertarian documentary film, Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. I'm sure most Fiend listeners have seen it by now. Uh, if not, you should check it out. Uh, a few caveats, you know. Um, it's uh, it's pretty principled, but uh, we wanted to make it accessible to uh, people who were still lefties and still righties. Um, that's basically the point of the movie is to bring people who are, you know, NRA gun lobby types together with people who are, um, you know, pro pot legalization hippie types. Uh, and both of those have status elements. So um, it's not really Anarchist 101, but there is a lot of Freedom 101 in it. I still advise you to go and watch it if you haven't already. Uh, next up, Government. Which uh, <laughs> auto corrects as gunner and other gun related things. Submit. Gunpoint. Gun Submit. Yeah. Submit. Uh, spelled, of course, G U B apostrophe M I N T. I can uh, picture uh, Dale Gribble saying government. government. He doesn't, but I could picture it. Yeah, he says government. Guns don't kill He's people, the government does, which is actually yeah. true. Totally. Because <laughs> that's the only tool the government really has at its disposal. Yeah. Um, so when we say government, uh, that just means the government, any government. Um, you should know that, but then again, the people decoding this might not be native English speakers. We don't know. Uh. Um, so moving right along, we've got uh, hassle doctrine. That's Michael's lighthearted phrase. It's a takeoff on Castle Doctrine. It's Michael's phrase for something he seriously believes the Founding Fathers would have included in one form uh, or another. Are, I need to change that to some of the Founding Fathers. Some of the Founding Fathers, yeah. yeah, And a natural right. Um, they might have put that into the Bill of Rights if they had a crystal ball to see where their quote-unquote republic would end up today and where it is headed from here. Castle Doctrine would basically be something like and if any person violates the rights enumerated in the Bill of Rights, you get to shoot them. Uh, this is based on the reasons for the American Revolution and on Jefferson, Mason, and Madison's views on the Second Amendment. They believed that citizens should be armed to prevent another King George from coming along and tyrannizing people in this new nation they had risked their lives forming. Hassel Doctrine is also the name of a Freedom Fiends episode where the phrase was first introduced. Um, should we clarify that some, Michael? Do you have anything to add to that? Oh, I think Michael is gone off on some kind of adventure, hopefully uh, preventing hassles of his rights. So uh, we'll just move on. Um, if fiends have things to say about it, they can always email us at TalkBack. Um, we'll go on to the next situation, which is heinous unit squad stories. That's uh, Michael's word for Law and Order SVU. Uh, Michael's Guilty Pleasure, also known as Statist Unit Squad Stories. I'm not sure if Michael's still into it, though. He sort of had an awakening where he... Into what? Uh, heinous Unit Squad Stories. Do you still watch your Law and Order SVU? Um, not, not like I used to, one after the other on Netflix. Sometimes, basically the only time I watch TV right now, other than to check the weather, is uh, when I eat... I'll sit down and turn on the TV and generally the, sh the channels I like have commercials on whenever I sit down and I eat pretty quick. Mm -hmm. But if there's a, you know, if it's a choice between like Bill O'Reilly and uh, the president talking on MSNBC and heinous unit squad stories, <laughs> I'll watch that for four minutes while yeah. I finish my pizza. Okay. Okay. All right. Fair enough. You know, there's um, so much shit on TV, man. I mean, I swear I have like 200 channels and there's like five of them I'll watch. And on those five, like it's usually commercials or something I don't want to watch. So I don't even watch it anymore, which is a good thing. Okay. Okay. While you were gone, I was wondering um, about Hassle Doctrine. Um, do you think it would be morally okay to shoot somebody who infringed on your Bill of Rights rights? 
Uh, no comment, man. Who are you and why are you calling me? You called well, me I, down here. Are you wired? All, are you wired? Our, I don't yes, know why you I called am. me down here, man, but I'm a cop and you're suggesting something illegal. That's from the <laughs> shield. I'm sorry. <laughs> nice. Nice. Um, uh, well, it's on our website. So re- regardless of what you say, that's what you say on our website. So I'm wondering if there's some clarification that needs to be done there. I don't know. It's just words, yeah. right? Just <laughs> like like we said in a few casts ago, everything we say is a joke. So, well, I don't think I say that I I don't say that I believe it would be moral. Do I? I say that they would uh, no, believe you don't. this. Yes, you say the founding fathers would have said something like, "If any person violates the rights yeah. enumerated in the Bill of Rights, you get to shoot them." Okay. I, okay, I do think that's what they were going for with the Second Amendment. I ah. mean, if it was, you know. The real founders, the ones that weren't the founding lawyers, the real founding fathers that are kind of the liberty guys who own slaves, um, they basically, <laughs> you know, if you look up their quotes on tyranny and the Second Amendment, I mean, they basically were like, no man should be debarred the use, you know, blah, blah, blah. It uh-huh. all comes down to like, this ain't about hunting. This is about protecting yourself from the redcoats or from any tyrannical variation right. thereof. And, you know, uh, you can point a gun at somebody, but if you're not willing to use it, you know, so I guess that's what they were talking about. Okay. Okay. Good. It's a good clarification. I'm glad we got to that. All right. Where so, Cass Sunstein um, actually disagrees and wrote a white paper last week on why that isn't true and that's not what they meant. Which is why we issue pointing at the Constitution in the first place because natural rights are inherent in our humanity, not in any piece of paper that any human has ever written, no matter how smart or stupid. Which, you know, is kind of like anarcho-capitalist 101, but that's what everyone else says. What's more important is what we say, which is Cass Sunstein's real name should be Ass Sunscreen. That's that's the <laughs> well, ooh, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. Which is far more important than discussing any of the uh, actual philosophical yes. beliefs behind anything. Of course, of course. The Second uh, Amendment was totally, well, fuck you, King George. And so was the Declaration of Independence. The Declaration of Independence was literally a dear John and a fuck you to, to I'll, King George. I'll buy that with the Declaration and maybe some iteration that didn't make it into the Bill of Rights of the original Second Amendment. But as it stands now, I don't think the Second Amendment's an F you. It's more of a, well, sir, I would I would kindly ask you to please go uh, <sighs> masturbate yourself in your bedroom yeah. alone. Yeah, and, and the it's NRA... Not, it's, not, it's not hardcore. It's not the N- you. The NRA is about to sit down with Congress and work on reasonable gun control, but... Uh, <laughs> The the main thing the NRA's reaction to the shootings was um, they think we that we need armed cops in every school in America. That's their <laughs> answer. That is their so square, man. Is more government guns. That should be the opposite. I liked your NRA mother's answer. answer. I liked your mother's answer. You know, if What's you're going to have state answer. If, what your mama? <laughs> your mama. No, your mama was like, oh, I was a public school teacher. I had my gun sitting there next to me out on the table while I was grading papers. <laughs> I like that answer. If you're going to have government schools, I'd like uh, more teachers like her. And she quit because it was she didn't fit in as a teacher, huh? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. They didn't yeah, she, like that she attitude. Because they tried to change the way she taught kids and make them the kids stupider. And she was like, no. Why isn't way she homeschooling fails. Knight? Why is Knight going to public school? Well, he he was homeschooled for a few years. Um, when mom went back to school, she didn't have the. Time Why doesn't she resources. just let him stay home and run wild and free? Does she really? You know, <laughs> I mean, come on. I don't know. I don't want to get too much into judging my family, All but right. I do. I do hope that Knight will get back to some kind of uh, alternative to public school soon. Uh, it's possible. You know, sometimes life just gets in the way. Um, the goal should obviously be to not let your kids subject your kids to to government school, but um, sometimes we don't meet our goals. Uh, All right, I want so read to- one more of these, and then let's. Uh, I'm sorry, you weren't finished. Okay. Go ahead. No, that's more. Okay. That's okay. I mean, no, no, no. We're we're at the end of our time right. here. So, uh, oh yeah, horizontal enforcement. This is these next two we should read because these two are very important. And we yeah, read them, them back to back. So, horizontal enforcement. That is the way that square status citizens help perpetuate the state and its nanny laws by their attitudes and words. It's commonly seen on juries where people vote guilty and want the judge to throw the book at people who violate nanny laws. See Joan the Silencer for a great example of horizontal enforcement. Um, of course, that Paper Joan 
Yeah. She was the meme of uh, covering the Ron Paul delegate's mouth with her stack of papers to keep him from speaking truth about freedom. <laughs> And even, uh, even hard, in a minarchist capacity, right? No, right. we don't. See, the Republicans don't want minarchists. Get out of here. We need right, right. we need Dick Cheney in here, right? And of course, horizontal enforcement's corollary is um, the thought that it's not really. It, it's it's also you know Larkin Rose's tiny dot. It's also uh, the thought that it's not the people that give orders that are the problem. It's the people that obey the orders because there's Which so is many the state. more of them. That is the state, and we'll right. get to that another time. But right. just to to foreshadow that. Yes. That's the state. That's not the government. The state mm-hmm. is the people believing in the government. Right. right. The state is the faith, it, and that is what is promoted by horizontal enforcement. It's when you socially ostracize those who who step back from the party line and try to come at problems from first principles. Horizontal enforcers will come by and say, oh, well, you must hate kids, and we'll live in a state of anarchy, and everybody will kill each other all the time. There'll be blood on your hands, you utopian butthole. Those are the kinds of things that horizontal I'd say there's a lot of the horrible things happening with the state, so their argument doesn't really hold water. Right, yeah. Um, And so... What you just did was an example of horizontal liberation, which is the opposite of horizontal enforcement. Um, we did coin this one. I don't. We did not coin horizontal enforcement. I'm not sure who did, but I think the first time I heard it was Molyneux, but I'm sure he might have got it from somewhere else. Horizontal liberation, though, that's a phrase coined by Nima, meaning the opposite of horizontal enforcement, i.e. the way that hip, liberty-loving citizens help educate others about the joys of freedom and the dangers of the state and its nanny laws. Um, their attitudes and words. I changed citizens to people. Just okay. Know. People. Hip, right. liberty-loving people help educate others. Yes, of course. And a good example would be Michael and Nima's work in doing Freedom Fiends and in the way our listeners spread the word of Freedom Fiends and its lessons to others. We at Freedom Fiends love the phrase horizontal liberation, not only for its meaning, but also because it sounds like it could mean having sex. Yeah. <laughs> And you should make yeah. love, not law. Make love, not war. And law is over if, if you, you want, want it. it. Yeah. All right, man. And we just hit 5 o'clock, so I think that's a good place to All right. say goodbye, fiends. We love you, and we will be back again uh, in just a few days on the Freedom Fiends live show on Sunday. Worms. I am, of course, Nima Vidati. On and the I'm other Michael end. W. Dean. Yes, indeed. Peace and worms. <laughs> Peace, love, and worms. Worms are, worms are here if you want them. <laughs> oh, I should in, probably play the outro. In Soviet, outro, huh? Yeah, in Soviet <laughs> Wyoming, squirrel watches you. That's what Mark said in the chat room. That's <laughs> nice. awesome. All right, here's the ad- outro. Those, and those, squirrels, do- those squirrels are actually like drone bots spying on me. Yeah, well, I thought you were the master of them, so does that make you the master of squirrel If I bot? believe that, I could see like someone who listens to too much of certain talk radio shows believing that. Like, <laughs> I need to take one of those squirrels apart and see what's in it. <laughs> <sighs> All right. God forbid, but here is our outro, and we love you. We're not saying the Freedom Fiends are the one true path to anarchist liberation, but it's a good one. If you want to put your voluntarist money where your mouth is, consider making a donation to the Freedom Fiends. Go to freedomfiends.com and click on the spinning coin on any post. Then make a one-time gift via PayPal, or set up a monthly contribution of as little as $3. Giving to the Freedom Fiends helps advance education of horizontal liberation throughout the world. The Freedom Fiends. We work hard, so send us some money. Thank you for listening to the Freedom Fiends Agenda. We'll be back streaming live every Thursday from 4 to 6 p.m. East Coast U.S. time on Freedom Fiends Radio at freedomfiends.com. MP3 archives of all Freedom Fiends episodes are available free at freedomfiends.com. That's F-R-E-E-D-O-M-F-E-E-N-S dot com. Worms! Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. Basic Handgun and Rifle with Jared Waltz. First rule of being alive is you own yourself. A groundbreaking approach to firearms and self-defense training. Beautifully filmed and easy-to-understand instructions make this one a must-have. Gun Training with the Non-Aggression Principle, Volume 1. New DVD from Michael W. Dean. Available on Amazon. Your house is your property.